All right, welcome everybody to Denver 7 and Out 22 Championship Celebration presented by Toyota. Visit Denver and the city of Denver. I'm Ann Trujillo, one of your hosts today, joined by gentlemen. Peter McDam, Mark Bozier, all with you in. And it's great to be here. It's a it's a wonderful, wonderful day. We are completely honored to be here with Thank we consider the much. queen bee That's of all Denver news and Denver news anchors. But what a wonderful day we have planned out here. It's going to be a long morning if we go this way. Yeah, you're probably <laughs> right. But I'll tell you what, the, the crowd has been phenomenal yeah. already. You were here early, Pete. I know you got here really early. Yeah. And people are just getting geared up. You know, it's, it's impossible to explain just how, how people have been, they put their... Oh, yeah. And they become, I mean, and I've always felt the same way. End of the season comes and everybody is anticipating the playoffs. But there's a certain group of people that are watching. And then you're in one, round one. And then round two. And by the time they won that Stanley Cup the other night when they're jumping around, all of Colorado was jumping around. And I've had, if I've had one, I have had 50 of my friend, you know, my buddies, my friends call me and say, Max, those were the happiest players. Oh, yeah. I mean, they enjoyed it in a way that you could feel it coming out of the screen. As each guy took the cup and handed it to the next guy, the players were happier for them, you know, to, for this guy to get the cup than when sure. they had it. I mean, it was spectacular. Uh, we have so much to talk about over the next couple of hours, and the Avs faithful, boy, they are here and loud and proud already. Big parade today. That's Ooh. what we're all here for today. So we have the entire parade route covered from beginning to end. Kyle Keefe and Vic Lombardi, they're on fire trucks getting exclusive interviews with the players. Nick Rothschild will also be following the parade on the media truck. And then we have crews out all over the place. Tony Koleski, he's out at 17th and Blake. Katie Gauz is at 17th and Lawrence. Danny New is out at 17th and Champa and Colette Bordelon at Colfax and Broadway, Russell Haythorne at Civic Center Park. And here we are at Civic Center Park, and I, I can't even guesstimate, you guys, how many thousands of people are here, because you're right, Pete. These people, they they were on the bus early, and they're ready for this day. I was doing a bunch of stuff yesterday, because I knew I couldn't do it today, and I just mentioned, you know, the, the, the parade is more I'm going. And then went over to the grocery store, oh, I'm going. And then, <laughs> so everybody in Parker is here somewhere. And it, it, but it's just, and it, when I said you're going to the Stanley Cup parade, people's faces would just light up. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be there. And it's, you know, I've seen it a couple of times. And, you know, the av with the avalanche, and once with the devils. And there is nothing like this. There is truly, if you're a fan and you've followed your team, and your team does it the way the Avalanche did. It was class and style. And, you know, Moj, is there any player that we could mention that we can't tell a story about Absolutely. at some point during those and, playoffs? And, and, and I know that you're a big Avalanche fan. I've seen you with the games, and, and you're a big supporter. But every single guy along the way, even guys who perhaps didn't play in the final, but they played a couple of games in the playoffs, so they played 58 games in the regular season, everybody did something along the way to help this team achieve sure. its ultimate goal. All the way down through, whether it's game three, a one block shot that could have tied the game, and you get the extra point, and then you move on, and you, you know, eventually you win you know, the Western Conference and so on and so forth. But every player has a story, and I think when you look at these fans, it's been 21 years right. now we were around but as I look at this crowd I see so many young faces that were not part of this in in 2001 because either they were little they didn't exist yet whatever the case may be <laughs> maybe they didn't live in Colorado we've had so many people come to Colorado in the last 20 years and become Avalanche fans so they're getting a taste of this as hockey fans really for the very first time. So it's a it's a very exciting thing. It's it's going to be a, a wonderful experience all day, and we're just happy to be here to bring it to everybody. I can't even tell you how many people we've talked to over the last couple of weeks who said, I wasn't even alive 21 years ago, and this is this is my dream come true. Yeah. So you know, our, da stuff. our daughters are just like yeah, that as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I have 21 and, and 19. The 21-year-old was, was this big sort of thing. And you know what, one of the things that the, when the team came over in 96, and Moj and I have talked about this in 95, it was, it, it was almost perfect, that team. Pierre had to do a couple of different things. This, 
this particular Colorado. team just won this Stanley Cup. We've all suffered through. It started rock bottom, 48-point season six years ago. And we've watched Nathan McKinnon and Gabe Landeskog and Eric Johnson. And we've watched Joe Sackett reach out and bring in this pick. And, and how about him? How And Coach Bednar. Coach Bednar absolutely thought after year one when they had 48 points, that from next 303 phone call is going to be like yes, that. Exactly, uh, exactly. But they, they knew what they had. They Lay stuck with them. The and now this whole thing has come together. And it, it, it is just this now belongs, this team belongs it's perfect. to Colorado. It's perfect, it right. belongs to us here in Colorado. Exactly. I, I, you know, I've been a season ticket holder since the Avs came to this town. And you're right. There were some very lean years where we couldn't give Avs tickets away. Hey, you want to go to a game? Uh, that's all right. Now, I mean, I, I think everybody's just waiting. Now it's all our arm wrestle. Let's go. Uh, all yeah, exactly. our wrestling be in the ring. <laughs> exactly. All right, so we have mentioned we have several crews out and about, and let's first go to Tony Kowaleski, who's on the parade route. Here at 17th and Blake, we're minutes away from the start of the parade. You can see they're going to be coming down there from Union Station. Crowd is out here having a good, are we having a good time? What time do you guys get here? Six o'clock. Six in the morning. Oh, yeah. Why so early? Good seats. Want to see our team? <laughs> and you brought the family and everything. Yeah, right me. on. Are you ready for a good time? Oh, yeah, we're waiting. Who's the one player you want to see most? Oh, man, Makar. Uh, you know what? The MVP, <laughs> right? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Have fun. Thank so you. we are about a half hour away. We're going to be at the starting point. You're going to see him coming around the corner at Union Station driving by us. We'll be your point person at the start of the parade. Sending it back to you guys. And listen, I know we were all here for 2001 in that parade. Remember watching people hanging out of the windows oh. and just, it's such a great sight in Denver. And, and we see Tony right there like that. Give him about an hour. Tony's gonna look different. He's gonna feel different. Uh, <laughs> Tony, good luck to you, baby. Yeah, exactly. We're all counting on you. Exactly. All right, we have more coverage coming up. We're gonna take a break. Be right back. Shout out to our friends at Wendy's for catering our cruise breakfast this morning. Absolutely delicious. I, of course, got my film, Altitude Sports, and Denver's Channel 7. Send their thanks to you very, very much. It was delicious. Oh, everybody got at least a piece. Jesse's going crazy. Also, want to remind everybody, all you have faithful, follow the Colorado Avalanche on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for behind-the-scenes content, all the team news, fun event information, and many, many special offers. Just go right there, and you will be hooked up and be clued in as a gigantic Avalanche fan. And we are gigantic Avalanche fans. So is everybody here in Civic Center Park. When you think about how many people are on the parade route, and then we're looking out here, and it looks like thousands of people out here. So this, this is the place to be today. We had Todd going. We have good stuff happening. Katie Gauze is out on the uh, parade route as well. So, uh, Katie, tell us what you're seeing out there. You are your piece of mind. Yeah, thanks, and we are live here at 17th and Lawrence, and let me tell you, if you guys are crowded there, it is getting packed here as well. Standing room only, you take a look around, we can see Union Station all the way down with the start of the parade. We're also seeing a lot of this guy. Hey, who's here to see the captain? Who's here to see the captain? How about the Stanley Cup? Are you guys ready to see the Stanley Cup? All right, it's going to be a great day here. We've got a perfect view. The whole parade is here. And the real Gabe Landeskog will eventually be making his way by with the Stanley Cup as well. Going to be a lot of fun for now. We'll send it back to you guys. All right, Katie, thanks for hanging out with us today and bringing us the, uh, the flavor of what's happening along the parade route. The parade is supposed to start at 10 o'clock. What do you guys think? What are the odds? <laughs> <laughs> I think Pete's face says it all. Oh, Wait, yeah. Okay, so when you have hockey players, and Pete, Pete will tell you, he'll elaborate, and they, they've been imbibing a little bit now for, let's see. A little bit. From Sunday night to where we are today on Thursday, it's like herding cats. All right, you get on this fire. Well, 
What am I? You're trying to make sure that you got all the guys somewhere oh, good yeah. point. in this area code. You know, where they'll be hunting. And, has anybody seen? Where is so and so? Oh, it's, it's fascinating. It's so much. It is just pure fun that they're having right now. So we might be here on. You know, at 10 o'clock at night, still waiting for everybody to gather. You gotta turn the lights on. <laughs> yeah, I brought a I brought a sleeping bag and a oh, pup tent just in case. Idea. I'll be here all day. But yeah, I mean, it, you know, they're having so much fun, and this is their time. And so, I know we have our strict rules on TV and this and that, and the parade route. Uh, it's all flexible at this time of the year because they're going to enjoy themselves, and they should. Because Ann, you never know, Pete, if you're ever going to get this opportunity right, again. Right. Some guys have waited their entire career, right? Entire careers. Yeah, yeah, thanks a lot. I'm sorry. There, there's a word that follows that. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I'll let you fill in the blanks. Because I was I was there several times on the knocking on the door. Never. Never. never so I can't touch this thing. It's right there. But here's the really cool part. A lot of these people have not seen the Stanley Cup before. And you'll see somebody see it for the first time, and their eyes just go. There is nothing else in sports like the Stanley Cup. Especially when it shows up at the wrong address, right? Even better. Well, and especially when it's got a dent in it. Yeah. I mean, I was talking. So many great stories. I was talking to the keeper of the cup, and he said that is the fastest dent we've ever had with the Stanley Cup. Abe Kubel now in the history books. I was going to say yeah. he goes down in hockey lore I as the man who dropped the cup in 2022. All right, we're going to take a break. We have so much more to talk about here with our Denver Seven Parade and altitude coverage. We'll be right back. The Colorado Avalanche Championship Celebration continues here on Altitude Sports in Denver 7 with Ann Pete I Motion. Hey, Avs fans, don't forget, head to Altitude on Finish to grab all of your Stanley Cup Championship merchandise and commemorative items. Altitude on Phoenix has the best variety of Avs jerseys, T-shirts, hats, and a lot, lot more. I got a really cool scarf. Shop online at altitudeonphoenix.com or in-store at Ball Arena and celebrate your avalanche in style. And we're looking stylish. I mean, that no, looks good on you. You know what? We're trying. Very nice. You know what? Of all the things that have changed, merchandising has changed oh. more oh, yeah. since the first yeah. time the Avalanche won the cup in 95-96 till now. I mean, the authentic... There is stuff there for anybody. I have got to buy stuff for my grandkids. They're sending me with a list. And I'm going, <laughs> what is it? I mean, there goes the entire. Okay. I saw, I saw a baby in an avalanche tuxedo, and I'm like, oh, I don't know where you fabulous. get that, but Altitude Authentics is the place. But as you can see, they look very, you notice, very good. You, very know, you notice that Moj does all the reads? Because I made up stuff when I read them. And I go off and, no, seriously, I get bored with what they said after a couple of times, and I'd be off. Well, Over listen here. to anything you say, Pete. All yeah. right, first, we want to get back to the parade route because we're dying for this parade to get going, even though you guys are warning me that uh, Avs players, we'll see when they show up. But uh, Russell Haythorne is out along the route for us. I th actually, here near Civic Center Park. Russell, what are you seeing? Hey, you guys, we're here in Civic Center Park with tens of thousands of our new best friends. These are all Colorado Avalanche fans celebrating the 2022 Stanley Cup champions. And uh, these guys are all friends from high school, all friends from Parker. We're going to start with you, Caleb. You're a hockey guy. Uh, what did you love about this team and why? Oh, we were so fast this year. Um, we just had so much depth. And honestly, McCadry getting under the skin of every team, especially the Blues, was just so special to watch. What were the moments in this Stanley Cup final, especially? And I know you went to the Western Conference Finals. I guess in the playoffs in general, what were the moments that were truly special for you? Well, I liked because I went to Game Two at Edmonton, and seeing Frankie get the get the shutout was so big. Uh, some eye issues, but I mean Frankie coming in and being able to do so. Yeah. How about you, Thomas? How, how is it being down here for this parade? I mean, it's exciting. There's so many people. I mean, you know, Colorado hasn't had much since Peyton Manning. Yeah. It's been a long, long, long year. But hey, I mean, let's go Avs, right? It's been a drought for you guys, right? I mean, you guys are young enough to not remember the first Stanley Cup uh, oh. championship or even the second, right? Yeah, no, this is the first one for us. So this is so special. Obviously, just, I don't know, it's a life, it's once in a lifetime, hopefully more than once in a lifetime. But I mean, Right now, this is I'm on top of the world right now. 
Luke, how's it feel for you? It feels amazing, man. This team was just a team of destiny. You already knew that they were going to win. I mean, Ryze right came into the Stanley Cup final, and uh, it's just so special to see your team win uh, a championship here. And so I'm so excited for today. It's just an awesome day. Way to go. And then the older generation, Ken, I, I'm not calling you old. I'm just I saying you've got some year, you've got some years on these guys. What you remember the first two? How were those? That's amazing. I was here in '96 at the parade. Uh, had no boys. Now I have three boys. They all played hockey because of the Avs. So for us to be able to celebrate Joe Sackick and Peter Forsberg and remember that, and now this generation being able to ce celebrate Kale McCarr, Nathan McKinnon, Gabe Landeskog, it's amazing. Colorado is a great sports town. And Colorado, the Avalanche were the first team to bring a cup, a major championship to Colorado. So I just love it. It's you so said great to be out here. You said you realize it's a Broncos town, but today it's a Colorado Avalanche town, right? Burgundy and blue all over the place. It absolutely is. And yeah. I think, you know what? I mean, I know people love the Broncos, but the Avs are number one in my heart. And I love the hockey. There's a passion for hockey in Colorado, and I love it. For seven years, we built an ice rink in our backyard for these boys. I mean, they loved hockey because of the Avs. So I, it's a day to celebrate, beautiful day to celebrate. Yeah. Awesome. Ken, not to be confused with Chris, I already made that joke. Um, guys, thank you so much. Caleb, uh, you going to have a good time today? Oh, for sure. Going to have a blast today. What are you most hoping to see today, the Stanley Cup or the guys? Oh, everything. I mean, Stanley Cup is a really special trophy, so yeah, that would be pretty cool to see. All right, guys. Yeah, some of the best Colorado Avalanche fans right here. We're surrounded by them down here in Civic Center Park. We'll toss it back to you for now. All right, Russell, thank you so much. I love how we're on a first-name basis with all of these Avalanche players now. We all adore it as they are walking, getting ready to get to the parade. And welcome back to Denver 7 and Altitude Sports coverage of the 2022 Championship Celebration presented by Toyota. Visit Denver and the city of Denver. This party is just getting started here in downtown Denver. Look at that huge crowd. This is amazing. Welcome to Denver, everybody. I, I know somebody is came all the way from Texas. I'm sure there are other fans who've come from other states today. I know someone's watching us from South Korea. So we're all over the place right now. We're excited to bring you this presentation of this celebration. Let's go to Kyle Keefe now. He's out by the trucks. Oh boy, Hi. here we go. <laughs> hey Kyle, you got us? <laughs> He's definitely out there all right. Hey guys. <laughs> Hey, Kyle. Hey, guys. How are you? I, uh, I got to get out of everybody's way. I'm going to be on the uh, the fire truck here with Jack Johnson and Josh Manson, and we are going to be fully loaded with families, kids, a giant engine. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to, uh, like, stand on the end. Uh, that would be bad. But I want Peter to sort of give you a bird's eye view of what's going on over here. All the families are currently loading trucks, and there are plenty of beers to go around, water guns, uh, these guys have not stopped for the last four days. Last night they were at the Rockies game, which I'm sure you guys talked about tonight or today. Obviously the parade, um, but big smiles. Here's Jack Johnson right here. Jack, oh, I'll get you. I'll get you. I'll let you get settled. He's got family and kids and dads and stuff, so I'm going to let Jack get settled. But uh, it's going to be crazy. Um, looks like the wives will be first, and then we're all just going to start. But it's going to be bananas. I want you guys to come to us as much as possible. We'll give you the best view we can uh, from truck 16. Again, we're on with Josh Manson, Jack Johnson, and just about every family member known to man. Uh, you know what? Let's just grab Jack here real quick. Jack, I'm going to get you about 10 times today. Um, how has the last four or five days been? Oh, unreal. Just, uh, I mean, the longest, greatest celebration of my life. Yeah. At some point, you're like, okay, I... I got to get back to my normal life, or is this just a dream you don't want to end? Uh, you know, it, it, at some point, yeah, but that, that time will come. We're, we're soaking up every minute of this and enjoying it uh, as much as we can. So who's on the truck today with you? Uh, so I got my younger brother, Kenny, um, Uncle Scott, uh, my wife, Kelly, and my three children, Jacqueline, Ty, and Tom. All right. Well, we're not. I think we're going to miss the rain, so that'll be a good thing. Enjoy today. I'll talk to you here in a little bit. All right, you got it. All right, there's Jack Johnson. We'll get Josh Manson here in a little bit. But, guys, for now, we're about ready to take off. Pete and I might die. That's part of it. That's part of winning the Stanley Cup. Uh, but we'll be in touch. Moj, Pete, everybody, back to you. And uh, I'm going to say this. Thank you, Kyle, very much. Appreciate it.
We're very good friends with Kyle Keefe, obviously. You know Kyle Keefe. Pete, if he makes it to Civic Center Park in one piece, I will be incredibly impressed. <laughs> yeah. If he does, I will be remarkably impressed. You know, there there really was a magic moment in Tampa. Because it's, it's not full of, the stands are, are empty. And there's that immediate jubilation of the cup and all of this stuff and the hugs and things. And then there's, there's this little void of time where the players are on the ice with their families and just the families and the players. And it was spectacular. It, you almost felt like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be here. But they were nice enough to say, no, no, Maxie, come on, you, you, you can be out here. It was great. Well, and also to see Johnson and Landy out on the ice, the last ones out there, just so broken, yes. broken it all in. So good. So great. All right, yes. our parade coverage. We're getting close, ladies and gentlemen. The 2022 championship celebration. You know the players are there. And we're here. We will get you through this afternoon. It's a beautiful afternoon in Denver, Colorado. And glad to see so many smiling faces out there. Who doesn't want to be here today? This is perfect. All right. Only we'll place to be. Momentarily. something you dream of when you're a kid. I was never in doubt, and uh, we got it done. The Cup, the Holy Grail. Lord Stanley's Cup. No trophy, more story. Hoisted this year for the third time by your Colorado Avalanche. Toughest trophy in sports to win by far. It's, it's incredible. Watching my dad touch the, the cup, it's just surreal. From Tampa. Taking that cup back to Denver is going to be an amazing feeling. To Denver. I hope I'm not going to wake up and this isn't real. A mile high homecoming, 21 years in the making. The fans in Denver have been the best all year. Abs faithful. This is your destiny. This is your moment. This is your parade. Bringing the Stanley Cup home to Colorado. And welcome to number seven and altitude sports coverage of the 2022 championship celebration. Presented by Toyota, is in Denver and the city of Denver and Colorado. We have waited 21 years for this day. We welcome you to this great celebration right here in front of the city county and city county building of Denver. And you'll be seeing the parade route here shortly. I'm Anthony Pio, along with two hockey greats, the greatest minds in hockey. Come on, you guys, it's true. <laughs> Mark Mosher, Peter McNabb. You said two hockey greats, I went. <laughs> so, somebody joined us on Well, he had almost 900 points in this league. I'm just talking in this league. But thank you, Ann. It's, it's our pleasure to be here with you. And it's been wonderful so far, and it's only going to get better because this parade is just getting started. This is so exciting. Okay, we do have the entire parade route covered for all of you. We have people all over the place because there's so much that you want to see. We're expecting, what, 250,000, maybe more down here in downtown Denver. So we have Kyle Keefe out there. We have Vic Lombardi on fire trucks getting exclusive interviews with the players. Nick Rothschild will also be following the parade on the media truck. And then we have Tony Kovaleski. He's at 17th and Blake. We have Katie Gauss at 17th and Lawrence. We have Danny New at 17th and Champa. Colette Bordelon is at Colfax and Broadway. And Russell Haythorn at Civic Center Park. And we know the parade route is just getting going. And you think the guys will all show up. You think we're all safe oh, to no, say? No. They've, had a, they've had a busy week. They've had a busy week, but I can guarantee you they wouldn't miss this for the world because they've heard about the last two. And you know, it, it really is interesting how the connect, there's one person that connects 95-6 with now. 
That's Joe, Joe Sackick. Sackick. Yeah. Joe Sackick. Now, there's some other people that work there. Max Sokolowski, who's been the trainer, and, and uh, John Martineau. Not many, but Joe Sackick is the connecting wire between yeah. then and now. And he would, I mean, his boys, his boys are going to be out today, and it is going to be spectacular. And, and, and make no mistake about it, for the players, and, and hopefully all you at home will be able to see this during the course of the parade, they are all very much, as Pete said, very much looking forward to this. They want to see the fans. They want to share it with the fans. You know, hockey players are just so awesome. But they, they want to celebrate with the fans, and especially the guys who have been through the very difficult times in recent years sure. with this team. They've appreciated the fans have stuck it out. I've had many conversations with the captain, Gabe Landeskog, about this exact thing. That Listen, we were we were the worst team in the league. McKinnon told me that I, most we were the worst team in the league, and these fans stayed with us. They, 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 they never gave up on us, and thank goodness we're able to reward them. And so here we are to get to share it with the fans. So Pete's right. Nobody's missing it. If they have to jump on at the last second, they're ready to go. Well, and watching that parade route just now and seeing the players on there, and they brought the whole family, right? Yes, you see, that's... That, that's what's so special about this. This does mean something so to them. That's what's so special yes. about hockey players. Every single family member, the moms the dads that I met, were just good people. You could, I mean, you know, I asked Mr. McCarr that, you know, Kale, you know, when he came home from school, he, did he have a job? He said, absolutely, he had a job. Nice. He didn't come home, and he wasn't some guy that was just going to wait and go back to school, whatever. He had a job. Yeah. Just like, I mean, and everything, I mean, the family is such an important part of the culture. Gabe's dad was there, and Gabe, we've, I, I mean, if, if anybody that most you and I have seen, 11 years in the league now, we saw him come as an 18-year-old. And it, it was almost a little scary how yeah. mature, oh, it's so good. mature yeah. and articulate. I said, get out of here, you son <laughs> of a <laughs> you know, I mean, give it a rest. But he, he's grown, and he became a, a young man, and then he became a dad. Yeah. And now he, but he's, the one thing that he is, that is, it is just true. He's the captain of he this is. team. He is. And that is it. I mean, there's not even, now he, he'll tell you right away. He's got leadership partners in it and all that, uh, you know, EJ, Eric Johnson, McKinnon, Renton, all of that. But he is that number one guy. And if there was a magic moment when he, when Gabe handed the cup to Eric Johnson, two best buddies sure. celebrating the tough times and now the ultimate. The veterans, definitely. Yeah, all right, so again, we have crews out on the parade route. Let's first go to Tony Kobaleski. Uh, the parade has stepped off, so let's see what's happening, Tony. And it's been 21 years since you and I were on the streets here. Where did the 21 years go, right? Hey, the crowd here talking to a lot of people. Everybody ready? We've got flags. How about some let's go abs? Let's go abs! Let's go abs! Let's go abs! Let's go abs! They are ready. And you know, I often talk to my kids about making memories. Today is a day of memories. We talked about the number of people that were here 21 years ago. I want to come down here and talk to a father and a son. How you doing, my friend? Hey, buddy, how are you? Are you ready to make a memory? Yeah. <laughs> Who is your favorite Avs player? Uh-oh. Is it a cap? Cap. Cap. How about that? Dad, how great is it to oh, make a memory awesome. right now with your son? It's amazing, man. I, I remember wanting to come as a child and being stuck at school, and uh, now just having the opportunity to bring him here and be a part of it together, it's something that I'll never forget, man. It's amazing. Who's the one player you want to see most today? <sighs> Honestly, I, I want to see uh, Gabriel Landeskog, man. I mean, outside of Eric Johnson, you know, he's one of the longer tenured guys, been here through thick and thin, through the hard years. So to finally hit it, get it, you know, Mission 16 is done. It's amazing. Right on. Enjoy, you yeah, guys. Too, man. Thank you. I, I got to tell you, they're getting ready. It looks like the, they're about to turn the corner up there. But, but the crowd that's here right now, 10 or 15 deep, I talked to many that got here at 6 this morning. They're going to come all the way down here to 17th, make their way to you guys at Civic Center Park. But you can see it looks like we're only minutes away. Hey, you guys ready for a parade? Are you ready for a parade? All right. How about we got the cup? We got the cup. And I'll send it back to you. Thank We're having you. a blast. Oh, they yeah. Be starting no, any no moment. lack of
some enthusiasm out here on the parade route. Let's go to Nick Rothschild. He is rolling on one of those trucks out there, Nick. And the parade has officially started. We are crossing over the bridge here across the street from Ball Arena. There were fans already lined up outside of Ball Arena. So this parade is well underway. I've got the AirPods on, as you can see, because I can't hear anything. As you would expect, Ball Arena was crazy during this entire playoff run. The play, uh, the, the championship celebration is very loud as well. All right, let's show you some of this. Okay, you see up on that fire truck out in the distance, that's Nico Sturm. I'm surprised he has now sat down because he's basically been standing above those lights shooting fans with a water gun since we took off that guy is living his best life several of the Avs players have brought water guns to uh, I guess douse the crowd in celebration we've got fans lining the streets here as we move up uh, up the road we are on a uh, fire truck here with the Avs assistant coaches Nolan Pratt and the like Nolan Pratt actually played with the Avs back in 2001 won a Stanley Cup then we'll see if we can grab him a little later to ask how this parade compares to that parade See if we can get a good shot of him, Nolan, enjoying his uh, second Stanley Cup celebration here in downtown Denver. It's a lot of fun. We saw Nazem Kadri and Andre Burakovsky up in the truck ahead of us. There, uh, Nas has already lit the celebration cigar. He's got the bucket hat on. He's having a good time. And realistically, the the fans are unreal right now. I mean, I know the celebration is for the players, but you Avs fans have really crushed it this entire playoff run, and you're crushing it today already here lining the streets of Denver. So I can't wait to see what the rest of this looks like as we navigate this route. Can't wait to hear from you guys later. Moj, Pete, and back to you. It's pure fun out there. And Nazem Kadri, can we just talk about him? Uh, I mean, he has become a fan favorite for so many reasons. Well, and his past in terms of the postseason, he fully recognizes and he owns it. He caused it himself. The suspensions, the difficulty he's had to go through. But to be above the age of 30 and transform yourself as a hockey player and a person, as it's a remarkable thing for Nazem Kadri. He focused, he, he was incredibly disappointed after last year being suspended yeah. for the entire second round. He said never again. And he went through some difficult times for weeks knowing he let his teammates down. He said enough of that. It's never going to happen again. Rededicated himself. He only had the best season end of his entire career. And Pete, he's completely flipped the script. He's been an A-plus student, an A-plus player, and an A-plus person. Mm -hmm. How Nazem Kadri was able to turn himself from the ultimate villain in the National Hockey League to where he is now in the eyes of the Colorado Avalanche fans. What happened in St. Louis should not, ha and I'm not going to get too into it, but that just the disgustingness of what happened on a hockey player and what he and his family to be had to be protected for all of that and how he handled that and how he, re you know, he was able to come back. It's a hat trick the next game with all of the pressure <laughs> Amazing. all over him. Then you come back 18 days after you have thumb surgery. Now, I've, I have many a doctor that I've talked to say, that's three months. That is a three-month thing before you're absolutely before sure. you're able to really use it and score the game-winning goal in overtime that probably pushed the whole thing into a victory for the Colorado so Avalanche. So incredible! I know. Those Such are things, a standout. The yeah. hockey lore now, 2022, will be well, the Denton Stanley Cup and Nazem Kadri. Truly a fan favorite. All right, Kyle Keefe is out with some of the players right now. So, Kyle, who are you hanging out with now? Well, I'm getting Josh Manson over here. We're sitting on a heater. Here he is. Oh, yeah. You, you get a nice little tan with your legs right here. Why are we sitting on a heater? Well, it's a heater. It's a, it's a fire truck, Josh. So um, so who, who all do you have in the back back there? Go ahead and show them. I've got my wife, Julie, and my daughter, Gemma. Okay, so Gemma. And let me tell you about this family, the Manson family. They are natural-born athletes. I mean, the, the entire family. Talk to us about that bloodline and how everyone's such a super athlete, including your wife. Yeah, well, my, my side of the family, um, uh, my mom played volleyball, my dad played in the NHL for um, a good career, and uh, my siblings all played, my, both my sisters played soccer, uh, brother played hockey, and my wife, uh, college volleyball player at UCLA, brother was a college basketball player, dad was a college basketball player. So it's, uh, we got some good, good genes, hopefully. Gemma. Gemma's hopefully got some good genes, yeah. <laughs> Now, what was, I know, because I know for the most part, you and your dad probably didn't talk, or did you talk that often? I mean, obviously, did you talk during the Oilers series? Yeah, we hung out still. I mean, we, we carpet, uh, compartmentalized everything, you know, like, 
um, kept the rink at the rink and, and took everything um, at home at home. Um, he got to spend time with Gemma and, and my family, and that was the most special thing. And then after, after you guys had won the cup, what was it like having the family on the ice? Oh, it was amazing. I mean, just to, to be able to share that moment with them, that's what it's all about. You know? The last couple of days, you guys have been here and there. How's the heat on your, on your ankles, it's by the way? It's really hot. We're, it's really hot up here right now. Um, how was uh, the last four days? I know you guys were at Coors Field last night, but you guys have been doing a tour, and I know it doesn't just stop after today either. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's been a whirlwind of, of four days, but it's been so enjoyable. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't want it to stop. This is, uh, <laughs> this is a lot of fun. We want to keep it going. Uh, do you know what you're going to do your day with the Cup? Yeah, I'm going to bring it home to, to Saskatchewan, my, up to the lake, uh, my hometown, Prince Albert, then up to the lake at Christopher Lake and spend some time with family and friends. And I um, and, uh, haven't thought too, too far into it, but I know that's where I want to take it. That's awesome. All right. Well, we may talk to you a couple times later, but for the most part, I wanted to get you out of the way before the anarchy starts. And you know there's a cooler of beer back there. Oh, yeah, we're, we're well aware. And I might have to dump some on this heater here that's soon. Right. Well, I was telling you for me, not for you. <laughs> oh, yeah, perfect. So go grab me one. Okay, thank okay, you. There you go. All right, guys, there you go. It's Josh Manson. Be careful getting up. Uh, we are now at uh, Spear and Wawada. Spear and Wawada, just leaving Ball Arena. Uh, Josh, saying hi to everybody. The, uh, the, the journey begins for us. I'll do as many hits as I can. Uh, I can't wait. It's, I can't tell you how hot it is on my ankles right now, but I got to stand up or I'm going to die. So. All right. I, I, we, we can appreciate that heat. Uh, we have Tony Kowaleski at 17th and Blake right now, where the anarchy, I think, has started because the parade route is coming that way right now, Tony. Yeah, and, and what a talented group you got on stage with you. Everybody's ready. You can see behind me, trucks starting to move forward, law enforcement, DPD out front. You're going to see the horses. We've not seen any of the, the players come around the corner right now, but but they're basically a 17th and Wincoop. We're making our way towards 17th and Blake and on their way to you. Crowd probably 10, 15 deep. Having as much fun as we thought they would be. We are having a great time down here. Denver Fire leading the front. And here comes the first Denver Fire truck around the corner. You can see cheerleaders up on top. Wow, if you don't have goosebumps right now, you are not alive. This city is electric all the way down 17th. It is packed shoulder to shoulder. We've started at, what is it, about 10:15, and they're making their way through the heart of downtown, starting at the city's epicenter, Union Station, and, and making their way to us. I don't know about you guys, but this is as good as it gets. Let's watch. All right, Tony, we'll take it back from you because we have a huge crowd here at Civic Center Park. So let's hear from you guys. We hear you live right now on Altitude and Denver 7. How's that for a crowd? Ready for a big celebration here in downtown Denver. We are so excited. You guys, can we also just talk about the injuries that these guys have endured over this season? And yet, it was all about team, right? Yeah, it certainly was, and... and the funny part is, is every time you win a Stanley Cup championship, then you realize what the injuries really are. And like Pete was talking about earlier with Nazem Kadri, he shouldn't have been back for another six weeks probably. Andrew Cagliano has got screws in his hand. His two fingers are barely hanging on. Andre Burakovsky playing with a broken ankle and a broken hand. I mean, Val Dechushkin had a, had a toe bone that was completely broken in half. Couldn't walk. He, 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 he literally could skate, couldn't walk, but he couldn't walk. Incredible, incredible. All right, we have Vic Lombardi, who's been watching the uh, parade for us as well. Vic? All right, here with Stanley Cup champion goalie Darcy Kemper. Did you anticipate anything like this? I mean, this is amazing. <laughs> Feels like the whole city's here, and wow, this is going to be a fun day. Well, you've got the, the water soaker here, and people want to be soaked, so it's your job to shoot back. All year long, you've been shot on, and you can shoot back. I, I'll try to get as many shots in as I can. <laughs> can. Can you tell us, for those who don't know the whole story, you posted a photo of your eye a day after you went through that injury. How bad was it? Explain to us. Uh, I mean, it was one right shot, and then when it opened up, it was, uh, you know, pretty hard to see. It was a long recovery, but, uh, you know, we were able to get it right, and... Uh, and then we did it. We won it all. When did you know it was right? When did you know you were able to play again? 
Uh, by the end of the Edmonton series, it was starting to feel pretty good, and then we had that long break before the finals. I knew it'd be ready to go. I always want to know when a goalie is in the final seconds of a clinching game, are you watching the clock? What are you doing in that game? Uh, I think the last whistle was with like two minutes left, and I told myself, don't look up. <laughs> I, I just wanted to, to play right through and not worry about the time, and I was kind of surprised by the buzzer, to be honest. You know, you have to take on a lot of criticism, but it's part of the job. Yeah. How, do, how do you deal with that? Uh, just try to shut it out the best you can and, and go be the best version of yourself for your team. Now the offseason comes, and I know you have plenty of time to think about that, but needless to say, I would assume you want to remain here. Oh, I love it here. This is, I mean, how could you not look at this? This is amazing. What are the chances then you come back? Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully I'm back. <laughs> well, enjoy the rest of this parade, my friend. Get that super soaker going. Yeah, Put go. some beer in that if you're really smart. That's a secret weapon. That's a secret weapon? All right, let's go. The Kemperer has spoken, everybody. All right, we are ready for the super soakers. It's getting a little toasty out here. Oh, absolutely. All right. All right, the parade is just now beginning, officially beginning. So let's go back to Tony Kovaleski. Are you guys there? We hear you. We hear you, Tony. We are downtown, and it is happening. It is happening. trucks are packed, the super soakers are taking place. Everybody is making their way through. Seventeenth and Blake is where we're at right now and it probably making their way through about five, six miles now. Very slow. Crowd having an absolutely great time. How about that? How about that? taking in every moment, the memories right now, the, the experience, the smiles are ear to ear. It is just, if you're watching at home, it's great. If you're here with us, it's also amazing. They are working their way through quickly here. We're gonna try to get up on this fire truck if we can. So there you, you've got some young players in. You've got Alex Newhook and Bowen Byram, two future cornerstones for this Colorado Avalanche team. And they're, you know, just getting started in their careers. But boy, are they enjoying themselves out there today. That's so awesome to see because you, you see this current Avalanche squad and you can see why this team is going to be so good in the future as well. They've got some great young players on the rise, Pete. And you saw Newhook and Bo Byram. Why is this team good? Those are their first two draft picks back a couple of years ago. And you know what Bo Byram did this year? He was the, the top plus minus player of all the players that played in the playoffs. Plus 15, and he's a rookie. He wasn't around for the- He just turned 21, he right? Turned 21. He wasn't around for the last parade. And he was, I think, did you say it, or you heard Coach Bender say it? No player played more five on five hockey in the Stanley Cup Finals than Bo wow. Byram. He, more, I mean, more than Kale McCarr, more than Devon Taves, more than Nathan McKinnon. He played more five-on-five -five hockey than anybody else. And not only that, when Sam Girard broke his sternum against the Nashville Predators, the rookie was called upon to play a bigger role. More minutes, power play opportunities, be better defensively and play against the other team's top players. And he came through, Avalanche fans. He came through in a big-time way. You'll see Bowen Byram here in just a little bit. All right, we're going to go to Katie Gauze right now at 17th and Lawrence. We are following that parade route, and it's coming your way, Katie. 
Yeah, that's right. Finally, these fans have been waiting anxiously. You can hear the noise getting even more intense. The parade is here. We got the horses and Bernie, the mascot, leading the way on the front of that very first fire truck. There you see him with all the cheerleaders, the wives, and some of the kids. The band is here. It's amazing. Take a look. The fans are loving it. Are you guys, who are you guys here to see? Yeah, everybody, the everybody, cup. Yep. The cup. Who wasn't want to see the cup? It's beautiful. Take a look. Absolutely awesome. You've got the ice crew coming through, the ice patrol here on the first fire truck, led by Bernie. Oh, we got a our very first mock Stanley Cup made out of Bud Light. The band doing a great job, guys. We're gonna have so much fun here today. It's so loud you can't even hear yourself think. This crowd is standing room only as we see our first truck coming through. truck we got some squirt guns yeah let's go I love it the cigars are lit more friends and family loving the squirt guns guys all right we're gonna have plenty more all day Send it back to you guys while we enjoy some of this parade. And what a thrill this must be for the firefighters out there who get to escort these oh, avalanche players and but, their families. But, can't you see part of the stuff that makes this so special, they're, they can act like little kids. They've got squirt guns. <laughs> They've got, the Stanley Cup champions are up there squirting people and having a great time. But that's what is embodied inside of that locker room. These guys get along, and they the one thing that they can do, if you can't take a joke, you are a joke. That's an old line in hockey, but this team can laugh at itself. It can have fun together, and it, it all makes what this team is all about. They're as close as any team I've seen in a long time. And that's the key to it, is that when you have the core in a very tight core that all like each other, they've all sort of grown up in the league with each other, and then when you start to add players, and this is why it takes time sometimes, you add this player, you add that player, not only do they have to be able to play, but they've got to fit in with the mentality of the best players on the team and the core group and the leaders of the team. And that's what Joe Sackick has done. He started to add the correct pieces that completely fit in, which brings you to a pinnacle like this, the third Stanley Cup championship for this team. And this is a very, as Pete said, a very, very special hockey club. It's a very tight club. You can have some fractured teams and so on, but this team is not like that. You know, fractured teams with all kinds of talent, you just get it done. They're very close and they're very tight, and it's uh, it's a cool thing to see. And they can all say now that they are Stanley Cup veterans, which, what, a couple weeks ago, there were only two. Yeah, exactly. now, now their name is, every one of them gets their name on that cup, the rats, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but they're, they're tied together forever. That is one of the things that I've always found fascinating. I'll be talking to you, Moshe, and you and I never won the cup together. And then someone will come, and you've won the cup with that person. I'm automatically excluded from the conversation. They don't mean to, but they just lock eyes, and they can talk, and there's a, the memories just come flooding back. You don't think that there won't be 55 days of memories that were made during these playoffs that are in, just inside of each one of these guys. Where, you know, Eric Johnson with this guy and Gabe Landeskog with that guy. And it's, it's, it's just absolutely fantastic. And to echo Pete's comments on that, you know, uh, some years ago, the Avs had a uh, celebration, the 20 year anniversary of the team that won in 1996. And those guys get back together, and it's it's like zoop, 20 years have passed, but you'd think it was yesterday because that's what winning a Stanley Cup does to people. It's what does to a team. So many years can pass, you don't see each other, or maybe you don't talk a lot or whatever, but you get those guys back in a room, man, 
and it's like you, you, you never left. It's, it's an a bond amazing forever, thing. Right? Absolutely. All right, let's go to Danny New. He's been out talking to some fans along the parade route. Danny? I believe you just tossed to me. I think I heard you, Ann. Thank you if you did. I can't hear anything right now because the parade, as you said, just got here. It's real loud. Bernie just passed by, which made the kids go absolutely nuts because Bernie is their favorite. As you can see, we have the fire department. They got super soaker, which is nice because it's a little hot out, so we don't mind a little spritz while we're cooling off. And we have so many trucks coming by. I mean, listen, we got here at like 5 in the morning and 8 in the morning. We're just watching fans slowly pile in. Oh, why do you want to hear me right now? Look how fun this is! These fans have been here for hours and hours. I've been talking to a lot of kids this morning, and they've all been telling me how they never got to experience a parade for the first time, and how they finally get to see it. And thankfully, we have my friend Colin here, who has his dad letting him sit on his lap. Colin, are you having fun so far? Yeah. This is your first parade ever. Isn't this cool? Did you see Bernie? Yeah. Is that your favorite part, was seeing Bernie? Yeah. Yeah, kids love Bernie. Thank you so much, Colin. Come here, my friend. How are you liking the parade so far? It's pretty cool. What's been your favorite part? I like the fire trucks and the noises. Yeah, we like noises and fire trucks. Who's your favorite avalanche player? Kill my car. Well, you are wearing a number eight necklace right now, so that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? That, that adds up. And also, Why? I have to have the jersey on. Yeah, well, show him, show him, show him. There you go. He's got the Makar jersey. All right, I'll let you go find him. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I will have no idea when you guys ask me to toss back to you because there are fire trucks in my ear, so I'll just do it now. Uh, this has been so much fun. These kids are having such a great time, and uh, and back to you guys. We'll, we'll take it away. Did I see beverages in the hands of some of the players up there, gentlemen? What's that? <laughs> beverages. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> no, well, see, and that's the key you when you're in the Stanley Cup. The beverages start flowing that night, and then they don't stop flowing until... Well, till the last beverage is gone, I suppose, Pete. And, and it's a big, another thing that's changed dramatically. These guys take such good care of themselves. It's the meals are set on the plane, and everything is just geared towards us being giving ourselves the best possible chance to win. But now it's time to party. <laughs> there is a time, in, in life, there is a time to party. And this is when it is. Well, they are super athletes, really, when you think about it, and what they have to endure on the ice, off the ice. I, I can't even imagine the, the discipline they must have to be able to, to do their jobs. Well, I, I'll give you Gabe Landeskog, and it, he's a perfect example of what he had to go through and then how disciplined he had to be. Torres Nia misses the last 23 games of the season, 53 days. And he came back in his first game, you, he didn't miss a beat. I, have, I cannot tell you what he had to do. Because this is a leg injury, so you can't keep your legs going. You have to rebuild up all the energy, all the endurance, all of that stuff. And he was able to do that and step right in. But the work that he put in behind the scenes that none of us saw, none of us, you know, he just was there every morning, every afternoon, every evening, getting himself ready. So when he came back, he, w he was like he never missed a game. And that is close to impossible. And you have to dedicate yourself. Your family has to get involved in all of that. I mean, he's got young kids and, you know, and his wife has given more responsibility in some of those times so he can rest. I mean, it is a family thing, but Gabe Landeskog, phenomenal. Okay, we're gonna go back to Tony Kovaleski on the parade route. And Tony, you have breaking news? Yeah, and you know, I know there are some people asking, what's the investigative guy doing covering a parade? Well, I've confirmed through multiple sources and an eyewitness account that what's inside of those super soakers is not actually water. They're filling the super soakers with beer. That means we're having a real celebration out here. They've been throwing some beer cans out here to the crowd. Everybody taking it all in. What are we thinking? Oh, yeah! Yeah, he meant heck yeah, but we'll go with hell yeah. The crowd's still working its way through. Everybody having fun. We're at 17th and Blake. I would say we're probably about halfway through right now. We saw Mayor Hancock make his way through, talking about how great this is for the city. And I got to tell you, crowd-wise, I have no idea what you guys have at Civic Center Park, but I got to tell you, it is wall-to-wall -wall here, and all they're doing is having fun. So, and breaking some news. 
beer inside the Super Soakers. Well, Back to you. I, I'm just curious how Kovaleski knows there's beer inside the Super ah, Soakers. Question. You know what I mean? He, it looks like maybe he uh, was the target of that a little bit. But yeah, of course. And, and, and again, I was fortunate enough to be there on Sunday when the team won the Stanley Cup championship. Uh, uh, I was fortunate enough to be in the locker room and celebrate with the guys and, and you know, drink out of the cup. They were you know, gracious enough. But that's what it is because once you go through it, the relief and the it's the it's the we've done it. it it's hard to even explain what these guys faces look like they will tell you from day one of the stanley cup playoffs you're bright-eyed and bushy-tailed you're fresh and you're ready to go and you've been preparing for that moment by the time you get to the third period of game six of the stanley cup final your legs feel like this is what they're telling me they're a million pounds you can't move every guy is hurt now, is every guy injured and can't play now? But every guy is hurting in one way or another. So, Pete, when it's finally done, when it's finally over, you see the exuberance, you see the celebration, you see the relief, perhaps more than anything, that it is finally over because it's the hardest trophy to win in all of sport. And it was, it was, you've talked to Coach Bedner every week, and you know what an honest guy he is. I mean, he tells us straight out. He said, what did you feel like the, the minute you saw the, the, the clock you know, he, which was actually quite funny. He said, I couldn't find the clock. <laughs> He'd been looking at this clock for all game, and now suddenly he can't find the clock. The first thing he said he felt was relief. Oh, all this work, all this effort. And by the way, they're the best practice team, the best prepared club of the National Hockey League. That's one of the reasons that they won. But that's what he said, Reli re relief. Okay, can I tell yeah. you as a fan, that's what we all felt, right, everybody? <laughs> relief. We could finally breathe and know that they won, and that was the best, best feeling. Oh, there it is, everybody. baby. There it is. Look at Kovaleski. He sees it. There you go, Colorado. The Stanley Cup right here in downtown Denver. How beautiful is that? That's awesome. Eric Johnson holding that cup next to the captain, Gabe Landeskog. You see Nathan McKinnon in that fire truck as well, and EJ egging on the crowd. This is what these guys, and have been working for their entire lives. Eric Johnson, the longest tenured Colorado Avalanche, and he's there with the captain and Nate, as he should be. Three best friends, and they've got that cup in hand and rolling down 17th. It's so awesome. And that's the picture that everyone was waiting for today, to see the cup, especially you're right, between Johnson and Landis Scott, the best site. All right, we have crews out on the parade route. Let's go to Colette Bordelon at Colfax and Broadway. Colette? Oh, wait. And I've been out here all morning. I've been having so much fun. I started out in Civic Center Park where we got to see all the people who got here so early. Some people even beating me and I got here at 4 a.m. Now we're waiting on this parade here at Colfax and Broadway, like you were just saying. I have Gunner and Theo with me. What's up, guys? <laughs> How long have you been a fan? Since I was four. Since you were four? Yep. So you're 15, so this is the first time you've seen the Avs yep. win a Stanley Cup. Uh -huh. This is insane. What is it like to be here for someone who's at home right now? who didn't want to come out maybe how would you describe this energy it's an experience there's so many people out here this is crazy the abs fans do it different they do right it feels different out here so much burgundy and blue how long have you been an abs fan oh, since I was born. yeah how old are you uh, 15. 15 you're both 15. are you guys brothers friends just friends just friends just friends yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but so how long have you guys been out here when did you get out here today uh, we got here probably like an hour ago okay Still got a good spot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Still got a good spot. Still see him come by, you know? What are you most excited for? I heard one of our crews just right before me just saw the Stanley Cup. So what are you most excited for? I, I want to see the cup. I want to see the cup. He wants to see the cup. Yes, sir. Hey, and the thing is, everyone wants to see hey, the cup out here. I want to see the cup out here, and I'm going to toss it on back to you guys in Civic Center Park because I'm probably going to get to see the cup first. Live in Denver, Club Portland, Denver Summer. All right, Colette, thanks for that. Who doesn't want to see the cup, right? Yes. Can we hear a crowd? You guys ready to see the cup Come here in Civic Center Park? Are we ready to see the Stanley Cup? It is, I'll tell you what, Ann, I first saw the Stanley Cup probably almost 30 years ago. And when you see it for the first time, it is the shiniest, gleamiest, prettiest, <laughs> most awesomeness thing you've ever seen in your life. I mean, artist to win trophy Absolutely. along with all of those things. 100%. Oh my gosh, well it is a beautiful thing. And there's JT Comfer out. Oh off my the goodness. Truck. 
He's been released into the wild. Go for it. We are ready for these uh, for these players to get here to Civic Center Park so we can hear from them personally, see the cup in person. Look at that, out there high-fiving people. And you know what, Ann? I mean, JT Comfer <laughs> did not have a great start to the postseason, and he would admit it. But as the postseason went on, he played a bigger and better role every single game and scored some of the most important goals of this entire Stanley Cup championship run, Pete. He just got better and better as the time went on. The Avalanche needed to win six game six in St. Louis. They needed that win. He got two goals. And it was two of the most important goals that he'll ever score in his career because it moved them past St. Louis. St. Louis had played well against the Avalanche, didn't want to go back for a game seven, and he was the best player in the Avalanche that night. And isn't it fun to just see them out there having a grand old time? I mean, look at Darcy Kemper. Beer cans are flying by his feet. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder where they're coming from. And I know Vic Lombardi asked him what his future holds. What do you, do you guys want to talk about Darcy Kemper? No, not, oh. not today. Today is about him <laughs> enjoying what, this is his team right now. And it's the most spectacular moment in, in, when he was jumping for joy, you know, in the four wins that the Avalanche had against Tampa Bay. Because you're not asked to win seven games, you're supposed to win four. He threw a three, a zero, a two, and what needed needed him the most, he threw a one. He out he outdueled the so-called and, and I will say the best goaltender in the game today. He outdueled him, so therefore he is now the best goaltender in the game. And I will say this too, and Darcy Kemper had never been in this situation before. He'd never gone this far. He'd far. He'd never been asked by a team to be that guy in, in, the, in the Western Conference Final and in then, of course, a Stanley Cup Final. And he came through magnificently. He deserves everything good that's coming his way. He's a wonderful guy. And to suffer that eye injury in the first round against the Nashville Predators, I mean, it, 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 I can't even believe it. The stick goes through, his oh. eye is cut. He has to have, have it done on the inside a little bit. And to see him come through, well, the way he did, is it makes my heart feel good for him because he's a wonderful player and a wonderful guy. Tell, tell the fans what Coach Bednar told you about what he had to do to, to rehab. And maybe you fans out there don't know this, but Darcy Kemper had to go see an eye specialist at, at three times a day to retrain his eye to see. Because, because he, the, the pressure, wow. he the couldn't pressure see on the top. straight down. He couldn't see the puck on the ice. That's why he came to the bench and said, Coach, because all of a sudden, Frankie was in that, said he was gone. But he, he, his eyes were blurring when he looked down. He had to go three times a day to retrain, as Moshe said, retrain his eyes so he could get back for the Avalanche. That is miraculous. Yeah. And that, you're right. I think that was that was not known, right? That was no, not shared. It wasn't known until yesterday. It wasn't known until yesterday when Coach Bedner said, yeah, these are the things that we were dealing with during the playoffs. Look at these awesome fans down here. Would you look so at them? So great. So great. You guys are so awesome. It's unbelievable. Love you. I see a lot of Landy faces out there. I see a lot of pom-poms out there and flags. Hey, Colorado, thanks for coming downtown today for this fun event. And for those of you watching on Altitude TV and on Denver 7, we appreciate you watching. This is a great day for Colorado. It's and you know, such some, a great day. Yeah, somebody said something that I respectfully disagree with, that the Avalanche players know just how important the Stanley Cup is to all of these people. And they want to share it. They want to share the cup with the people because they deserve it as much as the Colorado Avalanche for what they put in. And the Avalanche to a man have said that the feeling inside of that ball arena when they step on the ice for a hockey game is like no other in the National Hockey League. And that's because of the fans here in Colorado. Absolutely. And Joe Sackett told me on the ice after game six, he said, Moj, even in my time as a player, even in 2001, he said the building was better than it ever has been. And again, Nathan McKinnon made it a point to point out to me to say, Moj, the fans have stood by us. They've been with us. They hung with us the entire time. And we want, it, we want to share it with them. And that's what this is all about today. You're right. And, and when you think about the crowd inside Ball Arena, even for the away games, sold out. Yep. The crowds out of Raria. The crowds at the bars and restaurants, the crowd sitting at home watching these games. 
this was this was captivating. This team was just captivating this year. You know, they, they won in every possible way. They were tough when they needed to be tough. They could outscore you. They could outgoal you. I mean, anything you needed from this club. Joe Sackett found those players right at the trade deadline, brought them in, and the whole thing worked at two Brilliant. Day. Brilliant. All right, we're going to go to Vic Lombardi out on the parade route. Vic? You know, gang, I've had the privilege of experiencing now five parades here on the streets of downtown Denver, and it never ceases to amaze me how Denver shows out, how the fans here, the community comes out for stuff like this. I was talking to some of these goalies who are on truck number 22 with the goaltenders, and they just cannot believe the sea of humanity. Now, they play in the games, all right, and they look up and they say 18,000. The amount of people they, say he, they see here, you cannot count. And that's the beauty of sports, and this is why we watch sports, why we root for sports, because it crosses all lines, it crosses all genders, all political persuasion. It doesn't matter who you are, where you're from. Today, you're a Colorado Avalanche fan, and today you're here for one thing, and that is to cheer on the satisfaction of winning the San a Stanley Cup championship. It is so loud here, and the fans just don't go. Every truck that comes by, the fans get louder and louder every time. We're about halfway through the parade route, and they're running out of beer <laughs> because Darcy and company are using the beer in the cooler to put in the super soaker, the squirt gun. So anybody who's getting doused by truck number 22, it's some good old-fashioned brewski coming your way. Enjoy. All right, Vic, thank you for that. And uh, boy, this is a great crowd out here in Civic Center Park and out along the parade route. And we have Danny New, who's at 17th and Champa right now. That's right, I'm on 17th and Champa, and a very exciting moment just occurred for the kids right next to me because their favorite player is Kale McCarr. And Kale McCarr is coming by right now. You can see the Connie Smythe Trophy hanging out on his fire truck. He's waving. Guys, I've interviewed a lot of kids this morning. I would say at least 40. And I would say have them to their favorite player is Kale McCarr. Guys, look, it's Kale McCarr. Aren't you excited? Yay! Oh, that's great. Oh, look at that. That's a beautiful trophy. Like, I have seen so. Oh, there it is. Holding up the Connie Spike trophy. 23 years old, a prodigy defenseman, the Norris Trophy winner, and now most valuable player of the finals and the playoffs and a lot of kids are happy. Let me talk to some Mikhail McCarr fans right next to me. Guys, how much do you guys love Kale McCarr? A lot, very much. That's his favorite player. Why do you love Kale McCarr so much? He's an awesome goal scorer, he plays defense, he's just a great player. Yeah, kind of like you. Oh, you guys are good. Oh, give him a hug, give yeah, him a hug. That's hockey. so nice. Yeah. Oh. We play hockey together in our alleys and like out in the street. And you'll be like, Kale McCarr, yeah. yeah. to Ranton in, we'll right? Have our own players, he's McCarr, I'm McKinnon. I'm Rantanen. Yeah. You're, okay, so you're Rantanen, and you're, and you're yeah. McCarr, and then yeah. who are you? M McKinnon. Okay, okay, McKinnon. Okay, that's the, when I was a kid, like, that was the best part, was trying to be your favorite players in the driveway, yeah. right? That's always the best yeah. part. What's been your favorite part of the parade so far? Um, players. Seeing the players. Seeing all the players. Yeah. yeah I like yeah. seeing all yeah. the players on the fire trucks. And yeah. the fire trucks. They're not too loud? No. Just a little bit. We get, we get, we're very loud. Especially when we <laughs> you're play very baseball. loud, so you're prepared for especially it. Especially when we play baseball. <laughs> all right, well, I want to let you guys get to watch the rest of your first parade. All right, go enjoy. Thank you, Colin. High five from Colin. Thank you, Colin. Go enjoy the parade, please. Uh, that was really special because these kids and a lot of them I've been talking to have just been waiting to see Kale McCarr. So I'm glad that you guys got to enjoy that with us together. I'll send it back to you, Anne. That was great. That was great. And that really is every kid's dream, right? Boy or girl, and they think about this is who I want to be, whichever pro athlete it is. That's what we see out here with all of these kids. And you never know what's going to happen. What did Gabe Landeskog have on his wall when he was a kid? A poster of the Colorado Avalanche and he wanted to be captain of that team one day when he was 11. All right, we're gonna take a break. More parade coverage coming right up. Stay right there. We are back with the 2022 championship celebration. Your Colorado Avalanche has won its third Stanley Cup. Brought to you by 
Denver 7 at Altitude Sports. And of course, Abs Faithful, we have limited number of partial memberships remaining for next season. So secure your spot today before they're all gone. Check out more information on the 2022-23 memberships today and join the Fandemonium. Head to coloradoavalanche.com slash memberships to learn a lot, lot more. We had a little fandemonium earlier, did we not, Moshe? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I had a Bud Light in my hand. Thank you, crowd, for encouraging me. Uh, it was tasty, and uh, yes, it's that kind of day here at Civic Center Park. Thank you so much. Great stuff. They, they were just waiting for the super soakers, right? Yeah, they really had to encourage them, didn't they? Yeah, it I was mean, tough. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it very much. Like pulling teeth to make Moj have a beer. Yeah, it's tough. Oh my gosh, tough work up here today. I mean, you're right. Best day in Colorado. We've all been waiting for this Stanley Cup to arrive here for this third Stanley Cup for the Colorado Avalanche. And it's happening today, everybody. The champions are heading this way to Civic Center Park. We've been watching the parade route and watching it with you. And we know the players are having a grand old time up there with all of their family members and some friends up there. And drinking a couple of beverages here and there. And, and these fans, and when, when they see, when the players come out from behind us and they first make their entrance, and then they can see all of you out there, the, the sea. sea of humanity uh, in burgundy and best. blue, it's it's really a wonderful thing. And of course, we, we remember it from, from the last couple of times with the Savalanche squad, but Avalanche hockey fans are so loyal, so faithful, and to see them get the payoff pay off today and watch the players then respond to them coming up here momentarily, it's gonna be just fantastic. Because back in 96, this wasn't necessarily a, a huge hockey place, and it has grown and grown and grown. <laughs> oh, Kiefer. Kyle oh, keeps busted. hammering a Cody. Look at him go. Oh, my busted. goodness gracious. Get it, Kiefer. Go get it, baby. Come All on, right. Kiefer. Come on. That a boy, Kylo. He's very thirsty up there, right? Oh, no. Was uh oh. Uh oh. Here oh, we go, okay. There's an instant replay. <laughs> Hold on. Get, that's half of it. Let's get the rest of it. All right. There you go. Okay, knucklehead. All right. <laughs> but he was egged on in his defense, yeah, right? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. No absolutely. pressure. No pressure. But it's such a wonderful time, man. Seriously, it's, I mean, it's just a time to let loose a little bit, but but just share everything with these fans who have been there through thick and thin, and it's, uh, it's just a wonderful experience for all of us, and I hope that everybody down here has a great and safe time today, and the players will be here shortly. And, and the other thing that we've been hearing from a lot of people lately is that, you know, we just got through COVID. We just went oh. through some difficult times, and this is what we needed, right? This is what our Colorado community needed. We needed something to cheer about. Something to rally around, something to believe in. And, and you know, when this, this season started, we had been crushed, crushed, crushed three years in a row in that dang second round. And we should, and this year, when they end up beating St. Louis and they won that game, Helm scores, that thing is over, the relief there. And then now we're moving on. They blitz Edmonton, they get to the Stanley Cup, and all of that stuff was behind us. It was a, it was wonderful. Absolutely, and, and to do it, not, not only did you do it, but you beat the two-time defending Stanley Cup right. champions who are an incredibly good and incredibly strong mentally and physically strong club, and they overcame all of that. They never faced elimination in the playoffs, this Avalanche team, not one time, which is unprecedented. And look at Gabe Landeskog with his daughter walking down the street. Oh, my goodness. Oh, see? How awesome is that? See, that is picture perfect right there. That's actually, Scott, I can't see. It. That's his son. No, that's, I'm sorry. That's his son. That's his son, yeah. His baby son, yeah. Look at that. So awesome. Look at him. I mean, it, and this is all real. This is not made up. This is Pete. You tell him. You see, that's the beauty of it. He's not separating himself. He's not sitting on the truck and saying, don't touch me. I'm, I'm, I'm this. No, he's right there. That, and he's walking down the middle of the road with his young guy. And he's just enjoying the heck of it. Because the one thing that I have seen from this Avalanche club, they're proud to be Colorado Avalanche. And Gabe Landeskog is proud to be the captain of this team. And you're just seeing it. You're feeling it. And it is just, it is magnificent to watch. It really is. And Nathan McKinnon now high five hey. in the crowd, Pete. And, and, and I will say this, Ian, I have never seen Gabe Landeskog happier 
on and off the ice than I have before the season began. I mean, he he was the he looked the, the happiest he's ever looked and, and the most content he's ever been in terms of where his, his life is. And he was ready to go for it and help lead this team. And he is the captain. And look at that. Just what a wonderful scene. It, it really is pure joy yeah. when you look at these players and just enjoying every second of this parade. It's just I, pure joy. I was, I was watching Josh Manson on the ice the other night, and he had his little baby girl here, and he was holding the cup in the other arm. And I said, which one is more important? <laughs> <laughs> which one is more important? But, you know, look, look I mean, it is, it is cool to look at. Oh, that oh, thing. It's, it's a beauty. It is a beauty. And every single player will tell you it's heavier than you think. Because those it's guys what, are 30 five pounds. Five pounds. And it, it, it's, you go to pick it up, and like some of the guys are like, oh, whatever. But you usually got to give it a little push, and then, <laughs> but it's, it is just, but to see Nathan McKinnon out there and, and game with, with, yeah. his, with his child, I mean, that's, that's, beautiful. that's the whole key. All right, we also have Kyle Keefe out there. This, I think, was the pre chugging. Oh, no. Some guy just threw a beer to Josh Manson. He caught it out of midair and then put his teeth in the beer and the place went bananas. Kind of like that overtime goal that he scored. It's insane. I just asked both guys, have you seen a crowd this big in your life? Like they told me 200,000, there's no chance there's 200,000. It feels like, it feels like 100 million. Um, but it's so good to see. It's so good to see how many people love this team. This city is rejuvenated. Um, they rally around this. It's great for business. It's great for the community. And it's also great for, for younger kids that are that want to play hockey. Now all of a sudden they have these, these role models to look up to. Let's see if I can grab Jack here real quick. He's talking to his daughter. Jack, come here. Is this insanity? It's, uh, it's unbelievable. This is so great. I, 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 I honestly wasn't expecting all this. This is unbelievable. They said 200,000. What do you think? Uh, I mean, man, it seems like more than that. It seems like 200 million. Yeah, this is wild. And your kiddos are doing good? So far, yeah. <laughs> Guys, we're having fun on top of the fire truck. I can't hear you. You can't hear me. Well, hope you can hear me. Uh, but I'm having the time of my life. I'm probably indulging myself. Come here, Josh. Let's get Josh up here one more time. Tell him about the catch you had. Oh, I was, I don't know. I just saw something flying at me, <laughs> and I caught it, and that was it. It was yeah. a, Lebat, a Labatt's, or what was it? Like a, like a PBR. And then, and then two holes in it, and it was a celebration. That was it, yeah. I mean, we're having a ball up here. Here we go. I'll be here if you guys need me. <laughs> I might be indulging too much. <laughs> I'm enjoying it just as much as they are, guys. Back to you. See, and this is why I told you before it started, if Kyle Keefe makes it back in one piece, I'll be tremendously impressed. We, we, we told you, talking, talking to Josh Manson, and I was talking to him because I met his dad in Tampa, and his, temp, his dad was, was one of the toughest players that ever played. Uh, and we, we were talking about his dad. He goes, oh. Was he mean? <laughs> oh my gosh. How many guys get to say that in a positive way about their dad? And his dad was mean. He was a, a head turner. You saw him coming, you turned your head and you skated <laughs> away. I mean, he was a... And of course, what's, what's so unique about it is that the Avalanche eliminated his dad's team, exactly. the Edmonton Oilers in the Western Conference Final. But I had a chance to talk to Dave in the, in, the, in the celebration after game six down in Tampa, you can't even, and his, and his mom as well, you can't imagine what proud parents they are. I mean, yes, he got knocked out. His team got knocked out by his son's team. But it's the father-son, it's the mother-son, it's the, it's the proudness of, of what your child has accomplished. They were so joyous about it. They were so thankful that their son was able to win it. And... Uh, it, it, it was an emotional time for then, and I was I was very lucky to spend that with him for a few moments, and just great people, and so happy for Josh as well. A huge trade of the, before the deadline, and a huge component for this Avalanche squad in the run. Yeah, I, I was talking to his mom, and his mom's had had some life. She's had some, some life, and but they got four kids, and Josh, I mean, was weird. You know, his dad, Dave, 
to show you how tough he was, was punched in the throat, broke his larynx, and he can't talk any louder than that. Mm. It is the here is this monster, monstrous person as mean as you can, but it, but he he can't talk past a whisper because of an injury he got in one of the fights that he had. Wow. But you talk about parents and their role in all of this, and you're right. I mean, as any parent, we're we're proud of what our kids do. Hockey is a is a. It's just a tough route. It's expensive. There's so much travel. You have to, there's so much to be able to get to this point. There is sacrifice that parents, coaches have to make. And that's the key too, is that there's not a mom or dad or an ankle or uncle, grandmother, an grandfather, ankle? that too. Uh, thanks guys for making me do that. Um, but you know what I mean? There, it, 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 there's so many people involved in a young hockey player's life, boys or girls you know, throughout their life, getting them to practice, picking them up from practice, so on and so forth. And, and you know, to, to watch it come to fruition and to this, and, and to see the families and to see the joy on their face and watch yeah. them share it with, with their sons, with their, you know, their grandsons, their, their nephews, their cousins, whatever. It, it's, it's a very difficult thing to do. I mean, to win the Stanley Cup is incredibly hard. And to watch the families be able to celebrate, you think about, okay, they're six years old and you're going to practice. Yeah. And then, you know, you're coming home from practice and they can't get on the ice till 10. And Mosh, and where, blah, blah, blah. Do, where do these guys all take the cup? Home. Home. They yeah, all right. they take it home. home. They talk about their parents. They talk yes. about their parents, yes. their friends, the people yes. that help them get to where they are. Every single one of these guys will take the Stanley Cup home, wherever that is. And it is just, it's part, as you say, of the culture that makes these guys so special, so easy to talk to, so much fun to be around their parents or the opportunities that we had. It's, it's just cool. All right, we're going to go to Nick Rothschild right now. You were talking about some of the younger players. He's with uh, Bo Byram, 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 thank you, and Alex Newhook. Bo, how you doing, big fella? Good, how, how are you? feel? Uh, you know, we're having a lot of fun today. Um, just to hopefully give back to the fans a little bit. That we're champs uh, forever, baby. We're <laughs> champs forever. No, we're champs forever. You know, our fans have been everything to us throughout the year. Truly, every team says this, but we actually have the best, the best fans in the league. In the world. Um, we had the loudest rink every single time we were at home. It's, it's unbelievable. I'm so happy to be here with everybody and be enjoying it. Can you believe how big this crowd is? Every time you turn around, there's like 500,000 more people. You know what? Uh, you never really know what to expect, you know what I mean? Um, I don't know how many people there were here today, but to have them all here was unbelievable. Um, we just want to thank our fans so much. Like I said, they're the best in the world, and their turnout today showed that. Uh, we're just so happy to share this championship with them because they earn a lot of the credit. Get out there and have fun, my friend. Enjoy it. Thank you very Congratulations. much. Congratulations. Awesome. So awesome. Did you hear that, Colorado? You're the best fans in the world. That's a pretty awesome thing to say. And there's just one live look at some of the fans here in Civic Center Park. Man, I, I can't even guesstimate how many people are down here. This place is packed, gentlemen. I can't either. I mean, look, look at that. Oh, my goodness. That's from, uh, from the stage all the way to the uh, Capitol. God, that looks fantastic. You Avalanche fans, you turned out today. Thank you Love so it. much. Thank You're you. awesome. Thank you. And thank you to those of you who are watching and joining in from wherever it is you are watching. We love that you are joining in today for this great Stanley Cup celebration. I even see a gorilla in the crowd. Look at I that. I saw that too. I know. Craziness. All right, we're going to go to Vic Lombardi. Well, the winding road is almost complete as we're getting to our final destination. And Darcy Camper is either consumed or thrown, I don't know, the better part of this cooler. <laughs> I tell you what, he's enjoying himself. Darcy, throw him one. Come on, we're almost done here. Let's go, give him some, there you go. There we go. It's been that kind of day, man. Pace yourself, you almost, we're almost there. Yeah, yeah, we're, I mean, <laughs> great pace. Great pace, we're almost done. Just so you know, your, your, your jersey's soaked right now. It is, yeah, I might need to go to the dryer here. What a moment, what a day. No one, trust me, I haven't been on the other trucks enjoying it more than Darcy Kemper. Nicely, nicely done. Hey, if we get lucky, someone might throw us a beer, right? 
Well, yeah, I, th I think there are probably a little bit around. We'll, uh, we'll have the opportunity coming up here in just a few moments. But again, Ian, I, I, I just think back, Pete, 21 years ago, you and I were both right here, and I'm sure a lot of these Avalanche fans were here as well. But those fans have had to wait for so long, and then all you new fans, how many fans are uh, under the age of 25 out there? Let me hear you out there. They never experienced this. Right. They never got to see this run for their favorite hockey club. And so you're building you're building new fans. You know, back in the day, Sackick, Forsberg, Wah, Foot, Blake, Bork. I mean, we can go down the list. Those were their guys. But this whole new generation, look at that little one right there. This whole new generation, my guys Kale, my guys Gabe, my guys Nate, Pete, my guys uh, Miko, my, my guys whomever. Obira, I mean, yeah. all of these young guys are bringing in the fans, and that's, someone once told me that you don't have to tell somebody who to like. They'll watch and they'll like a person for a certain reason, and you have no idea why. And every, every player has a bunch of people, thousands of people, that that's their favorite player. And you have no idea why. It's just the connection that they have. Well, and you guys have talked a lot about the team and how dedicated they are, but I, I think we saw every one of them step up in clutch situations. So I think that that is, that is the reason why there are so many people who say, this is my guy or that's my guy. And, and I think one of the reasons why they were so successful, as you mentioned, was that we can go back and remember each player playing his part when he was needed. Right. I mean, Helm scoring in, in St. Louis, the biggest goal of the playoffs, as far as I was concerned, because it, it got rid of St. Louis in six. And that was a big goal. So there's everybody had some. How about Frankie? How about our boy oh Frankie? Gosh, yes. He, they asked him to play six games. He wins six games. He was tough. He was tough. All right, we have Alex Newhook, who is with uh, Nick Rothschild. Oh boy. Oh, I don't want to be in your selfie. <laughs> Whoops. Newey. All right, we're talking to the fans right now. We're live in Civic Center Park. What would you like to say to the fans? You guys are the best, man. Best in the world. I said it. I said it all parade. I don't know if you can hear me, my voice is kind of gone, but man, every time I'm like, best in the world. These guys, these fans are the best, man. Like all, all, all playoffs, people don't think it's Colorado being a Canadian. They don't think of Colorado as being like the best fans in the world. But I promise you, man, I haven't played in a better rink, better atmosphere, and we had all season, all playoffs, and it got us to where we are right now. And we can't thank you enough as a whole team. So it's, it's unbelievable. What are they saying as you run by and give them high fives? Yeah, no, it's just like, let's go, let's go. And I'm saying the same thing. Like, let's go, man. We're here now. We did it. And now we can celebrate. So it's great. You've been celebrating for like four days straight. Yeah. How are you standing upright? Listen, we, we recoup from when the fans are around. You know, they <laughs> give us that energy. It doesn't matter. We could be down on a, on a Wednesday night at home, but the fans come out and we're the same person. So it's the same thing here. You know, the fans give us that energy. To get us to, you know, get going for them and uh, Stanley Cup final, Stanley Cup parade. It's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun, my guy. Enjoy this. Oh, and we are having fun. Look, the parade is getting close to Civic Center Park. We are oh so close to the rally here on the steps of the City and County Building. There is that beauty, the beautiful Stanley Cup. The shiniest thing you've ever seen in your life, and. It's uh, and it's immortality. That's the key. It's hockey immortality. Your name is there forever, and when your band comes off, it goes in the Hall of Fame forever. Uh, that there are names on there that have been on that for almost 60 years right now. It's hockey immortality, and these guys are part of it forever. It's amazing. It is a beauty, and you are going to hear from some of these players coming up here right after this break. It's been 21 years since Lord Stanley came home, right here to the Mile High City. We knew there was something special about this team from the beginning. And now, look how far they've come. It's over! They did it! They did it! The Colorado Avalanche are Stanley Cup champions! And they will lift Lord Stanley a mile high! Sackett will be there at the Capitol one more time alongside the team he built. All the battles, the blood, sweat, and tears, they were all worth it. Worth it for the chance to lift the Stanley Cup, not only for the players, but an entire city. It's the moment we've all dreamed of, worked hard for, and now we're all here to 
to celebrate together. Ladies and gentlemen, the Stanley Cup is home. Welcome all to Denver 7 and Altitude Sports coverage of the 2022 Championship Celebration presented by Toyota. Visit Denver and the city of Denver and look at this crowd in downtown Denver. How exciting is this? We have the Stanley Cup champions right here in Denver, Colorado today. What a day. It's, it's fantastic and we see this here and up, up on the set as we get ready to, uh, to, to start the festivities. Uh, and uh, what do you give it? Five minutes before that's gone? Oh, I thought you were going <laughs> to make me offer him money. That's not going to take a penny, right? No, but, but this on, is, <laughs> we know all those Coors Light is the hometown beer of the Colorado Avalanche, official partner of the Avalanche. And they're proud to celebrate the F's championship win by brewing a limited edition beer. Now, this was made with the shavings. I'm not kidding you, the shavings of the Avs Championship ice. So what Coors Light did is they scraped ice from Ball Arena following pregame on game one of the finals. That was July 15th, or excuse me, June 15th of, uh, of 2022. Take it to the, the uh, Blue Moon Brewery in Rhino, purified using reverse osmosis, ultra filtration technology, removed all the impurities. The rink water blended into the high gravity batch of Coors Light to bring the ABV down to 4.2. And Coors Light produced 250 limited edition 22 ounce bomber bottles. So these are incredibly rare. 50 are being distributed to the players, coaches, and staff today. And by the way, get this in. And you'll, you'll want this with your husband later. Coors Light also produced 120 kegs, which are available at oh. all of the major accounts downtown after the parade for fans to purchase. So this is it inside, and each, each bottle is numbered. Oh my gosh. And it, inside special. are actual ice shavings wow. from the ice on uh, on June 15th, okay. game one of the final. So how does oh, it cool. taste? How does it taste? Well, I'm not going to open it no. because Anybody I might yet? get in trouble. But I'm sure it tastes fantastic because Coors Light is a fantastic product. All right. Well, that sounds great. And they're, beauti they're beautiful. Beautiful oh, they bottles. Are. And beautiful they're big. Labels. I mean, yeah, they're the biggest, Pete. The big guys. That's the. <laughs> Ah, that's, are you kidding? Oh, that's, little cool, that, no, that. no, that's Moj in the old days, that's lightweight. Oh, oh that's the little oh, guy no. back in. You know, I heard someone talking about lightweight. <laughs> I, I know, I know lightweight. This, boom. All right, we're looking at the city and county building here in downtown Denver. We are minutes away from the celebration that's going to happen on this very stage. And this is like a, a, a concert, right? Look at all of these folks out here with their flags, with their beach balls throwing around. They're just ready to party and have a great time here in downtown Denver today. Who's going to be on that stage today, gentlemen? Well, all the players certainly will be for sure. I mean, everybody will line up and they will all have an opportunity to uh, you know, to say hi to the crowd. But you, you know that Joe Sackick is going to be there and speak the general manager. You know that Gabe Landeskog and Nathan McKinnon, all of all of the guys, Kale McCarr, the Con Smythe winner, and I mean, when you win as a Calder, you win the Calder as a rookie, but you win a Norris, a Con Smythe, and a Stanley Cup Peter in one year. Yep, it's, he's the guy. It's unprecedented. Three years in the league, two times first team All-Star. Yeah. You know, Coach Bednar is going to speak. And he, my mind, not even a question, best coach in the National Hockey. So when you combine the best general manager with the best owner in, in all of sports, maybe, is Stan Kroenke. And then you get Joe Sackett, who knows what it takes to win. He knows. And then you get Coach Bednar, who's won at every level. Yep. And Joe Sackett said that. He said, the ownership uh, for Mr. Kroenke and Josh Kroenke to be patient with us. I, had, I, I knew what I wanted. And they said, we buy into you, Joe. And they've built champions. I mean, obviously, the Mammoth won the championship this year. The Rams, of course, won. But but this Colorado Avalanche team, they are committed. And this ownership group is unbelievable. I mean, Stan Kroenke, Josh Kroenke, they are, they are so fantastic. And every guy that runs this team and knows it, they know how committed they've been. Yeah, it all just came together yeah. so perfectly, did it not, this year? Yeah. And then you're right to have superstars like like Kale McCarr, who we haven't even talked about today, who we hope we will hear from today because you'll hear from him and you'll be stunned with how composed and just how he comes across as such a, a good person. And he's 23 years old. You know, each person that will speak, and it, it's amazing after three years, the Avalanche have been lucky enough. They have there's 
McDavid in Edmonton. There's Matthews in Toronto. There's Nathan McKinnon here. And now you have to throw in Kale McCarr. The four best players in the world, and the Avalanche have two of them. And, and, and you think about it, at 23 years of age, he's just scratching the surface on what is projected to be and what looks like a future Hall of Fame career. I don't want to get ahead of my skis here, Ann, but my goodness, he's a special young man and a special man. And so many of these players just, but well, they're young. Oh, yeah. They have great futures ahead of them. There's, I mean, you, could, you could go through the list, right? Of, of and it, it, the great part is, you're, and I've seen this, never felt it. I've seen this. You, <laughs> you get it once, you are hungrier than right? next time. It's like I chased it, and I always wondered what that would be like. These guys that have it, and you take it from, try to take it from, they're they're awful. They're meaner than the guys that are want it because they don't know what it's like. I do when I want it, when I win it, want it, and I am not giving that thing to you. You're gonna have to just rip my hands off. We are filled back all the way into the Capitol. So, so many people from the parade around have come down. It's from Civic Center all the way, the courthouse, all the way to the Capitol. And I'll say this about Pete. I love this man. I've worked with him forever. And uh, he, uh, he, he's, he was a great hockey player. And I give, him, I give him the business. His father is on the Stanley Cup. His brother is on the Stanley Cup. He was a great player, never fortunate enough to win the Stanley Cup. And you're going to continue, and you're but, not no, on this. Is that how that sentence is? Oh. And I will never be either, but uh, so that we have that in common. <laughs> but, uh, but the way he talks about it, it's so special because hockey players like Pete, hockey families like Peter's family, it means so much. And now the fans understand, through guys like Pete, that it means so much to these players. And that's why the emotion pours out of them. Oh. And that's why, it, and the family share it. it. It's more important than any other trophy. I don't, I don't know what else you can say. It's not like, it's not like other trophies. This, this, this goes beyond. Every guy will get it, but it goes to the next group and the next group and the next group. It travels through time. And you guys, you in particular, have talked us through so many games and and given us great insight. And it's that it's that player perspective that that it, you, you, you know, can't get from sitting on a couch. It's funny how when you're watching stuff like the Avalanche win the cup and then the, the, the stuff afterwards, it all makes such beautiful sense because you watch them play and then they are what you see. You know, I mean, they, they, you see them play with such honesty and they play so hard and they're so dedicated and then you meet them off the ice and their families and they are so, I mean, they're so respectful to mom and dad. There's nobody, trust me, there's not one of these guys where mom and dad doesn't come first. I mean, it is, it's a family thing. The parents are so proud to have their sons win this Stanley Cup, represent this hockey club, represent this city. And that's all the, fam that's all the families you talk about. Boy, is it great playing for that team. And you can see it in all these yeah. guys as they're riding on these fire trucks and, and sharing this moment with their families. So we are waiting for the celebration to begin here on the steps of the Sinning County building. And uh, we still have crews out and about with the uh, with the team as they're making their way here. So let's go to Nick Rothschild, who was just talking with Logan O'Connor. Uh, how is this? I mean, you've you've experienced the life here in Denver going to DU, but now coming through and watching all of these fans crowd the, the streets for you, what was that like? I mean, noth nothing beats this. This is what it's all about, sharing it with the city. Um, you know, we've been so fortunate the whole year, and, and it's awesome to celebrate with everyone. Did it impress you, just the volume of people that were here today? Oh, it was it was insane. I mean, I'm not surprised, but it was still pretty, you know, you know special to think about, and... Uh, Surreal for sure the whole time. What can you say about this fan base supporting you guys from from the, the worst team in the league to now supporting you throughout this long season and run to the Stanley Cup? They've been there since day one. I mean, uh, obviously some tough years for the team. Uh, tw 21, whatever years it is since uh, they last won it. And, you know, they, they've been hanging around the whole time. The support's been, you know, second to none. So it, it's been awesome. Everyone that comes in town says it's so hard to play here. And, we talked about it the other night how you know unique it is to play play for the Avs. Logan O'Connor's life did it just peak out here today? 
I definitely think so, yeah. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> Have fun, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, truly a highlight today uh, for all of us, right? Pioneer, yeah. But think about this, Ann, too. The Pioneers won the national championship. Right. Logan O'Connor played there. Pete, of course, is a DU Pioneer. Denver East won the state championship. And, uh, I mean, uh, the, the Avs Quebec uh, junior team won the, right. the Quebec junior Pee Wee tournament, which is the most prestigious Pee Wee tournament on planet Earth. What a synergistic year for Colorado hockey. And I, I don't even know how to describe it, Pete. But it gets back to that first year when that team played. They were spectacular in just how they played the game. So if you watched hockey, it didn't matter. How, the best athletes said, you know what? Yeah. I want to play that game. Exactly. That, that's my game. So they that's where we're getting to. We're getting to the point now where guys are getting drafted out of playing only hockey here in Colorado. They're going to Denver University. They're going to CC. They're going out east. They're going west. They're, they're expanding because of that first team that just fueled the imagination of what I can do oh, yeah. if I can be a hockey player. We are growing talent right yep. here in this state. You're absolutely right. All right. First people here today started arriving like 5, 5.30 a.m. And we have this time lapse. Look at this. If you were thinking I need to get down there early, well, somebody beat you because no joke, 5.30 this morning. And now as we look at this place oh my up, goodness and we look at the streets of denver oh my goodness whoa that's how amazing that? that's how committed colorado is to yeah, this I got, I got here at six so i never moved that fast in a long time <laughs> I, I was really cooking there for a while <laughs> this is good stuff and oh. so yes we are waiting for the celebration to start and uh oh so this is the, yeah, the, the, yeah. The, DU, the du team yeah coming in and to think about that it, at Denver East as well. I mean, you think about, honestly, this is, it's incredible. Pios win the national title, Avs win the Stanley Cup, Denver East High School wins the, uh, you know, wins the, the, the championship. The and Quebec how? Major Junior Team, it's just, it's it's ridiculous the, the way hockey has flourished in the state of Colorado. And how brilliant to include them. That's to great. make them know that, they, yes, they, you are part of the yeah. hockey culture here in Colorado, whether it's a college or high school, the mammoth, what you name it, we, they're winning right now. We have so much to celebrate today. Yeah. Yes. And we are, again, waiting and for And we're lucky for that. We're, we're absolutely yes. fortunate for that because it's difficult. I, there, there are players who, obviously like Eric Johnson, you know, he's been in the league for a very long time. He's never won, and so he wins, and he's very thankful. And there are guys like Andrew Cogliano who has played 1,100-plus games. He's never won. Now he's very thankful. There are also players, in who win when they're rookies. You look at Bowen Byram right now. Right. And they think, you know what? We're going to be back here. And by the way, you never get back again. That's how hard it is, Pete. And you know that. Uh, and we've seen numerous examples of guys that we know said, boy, I thought we were going to get there again. And uh, golly, that, that, that was but it. Eric Johnson had the best line about his defensive partner. He's, what's Eric? 32, 3? Uh, 33. 33. Yeah. Bo Byram's 21. Right. He goes, I've played 900 games in the National Hockey League. I've played 14 years. This guy's played 40 games and he gets to run with a Stanley Cup. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my God. Pete, so let's take a look back here at, at, uh, at last place in, in 1990 91, the Quebec Nordiques. They win the Cup in 96. That team got very special very quickly. Oh, I mean, and Mark, we were, I, I, I did a lot of the games that year because we were looking for something to talk about I, down at the ice level. And I had a, a friend of mine that was playing for the Avs. He came up and said, we, they be had 4-2. We got no shot. I go, what? We got no shot. You know, and sure enough, they would, they, they created ways to lose hockey games. It was unbelievable. But then the next year, they, they, Coach Bednar was able to instill the idea that they could make the playoffs. That, they had a game against St. Louis that next year that was the best uh, regular season game I had ever seen. And I said, you know what? They're a long way away because they had beat by Nashville that year in the playoffs. They're a long way away. But look at the crowd and look at the players that are here. Look at the, by that time, Rantanen was there and Johnson was there and, Mc, and um, Gabe Landeskog was there. And they were, it, it, that, that group, was starting to grow, and you could just feel it, and all the way through. And I still believe 
the, the three losses in the second round. The first one hurt. The second one really hurt. Last year, when they lost to Vegas, that was the turning point for this entire franchise because it killed him. To a man, it absolutely killed him. And so what it culminates in, in is what we're going to see right here. What these players do now that they've learned, they, they've taken all their pain from all the Stanley Cup losses, or, you know, the playoff losses, and they've quilted all together to something like this. Kale McCarr, the Conn Smythe winner, eight goals, 21 assists for 29 points. For a defenseman, that's off the charts ridiculous. Sure. Miko Rantanen, maybe the most important and quietest 25 points in Stanley Cup playoff history. And then, of course, McKinnon with 13 goals, huge goals, and the captain gave Landis Cog was fantastic. And, and there's our guy. Is he going to make it in? And you you're, 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 you're smarter than we are. Is he going to make it? Are you sure? He's going to tumble off that thing, and it's just going to be... You know, I think it's just great that he's having a grand old time oh. on that fire truck, and, you know, he's in the safest he, possible place right there. Well, Kyle's a very reserved, <laughs> quiet... Oh, yeah, right. He is stepping so far out of his element with this. It's just incredible. And he hates beer. Oh, oh well, yeah. just really yeah. hates it. You know, it, it's just... You're all such a shy bunch. Oh, oh yeah. yes. It's been so fun working with you, my gosh. What a, what a great day. You know, you all, you know everything about hockey, hockey mom. Avid Avalanche fan. That's, oh, that's I've as much seen as you I with the say, games. But... I saw you down in Tampa. <laughs> you were you were there celebrating. I mean, well, you know, it, it being Absolutely. enthusiastic and 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 you're just like all of us too. You know, we're, we're fans yeah, of the game. See, that's we're fans of the team, man. See, that's the biggest thing I think that's made it so much fun for you and I. We're just enormous fans, and so when when the Avs lost those series, we were just not as devastated as the players. But, oh, it was it was terrible. And we weren't even broadcasting them. We were just, you know, around. And, you know, so for them to do this this year and the way that they did it, uh, it it's it's so cool. And Peter is so correct. That loss last year to Vegas when they thought they had it set up correctly was devastating. And and the coach even said the other day, actually on Altitude 92.5 our, on our morning show, he said, yeah, uh, we absolutely use that as motivation. In fact, I talk about that. The first day of training camp I met with the team, I talked exactly about that. And he said, we're not going to shy away from it. We're not going to run from it. That's our past. We have to learn from it. That's who we are. We need to embrace it and move forward. And that's exactly what they did. Pete is a thousand percent correct. It's, and, and again, when they won the cup in 01, started training camp, they, they had lost a series before in, the, in 2000 because they didn't have home ice. Every single one of them said, we're gonna get home ice. And they did, game seven, here they beat New Jersey. This year, the mantra was, we are gonna get past, we're gonna win every single game, we're gonna have home ice, we are going to get past round two. And they did, and they moved on, and they won the cup. But it was on every single player's minds, and it was just that single motivating thing. We'll make it, I swear. Uh Please, dear God, stop it. Stop it. Is there somebody stepping on a cat? You know, on that note, I think we should take a break. What do you think? Please. Oh, got it. <laughs> we'll be right back. Just when I'm getting crazy. <laughs> Nathan McKinnon and Johnson embracing it on the ice at center ice. Talked to Josh Manson about it. I said last minute, how are you feeling? He said, I blacked out. I, I literally blacked out. He's making a change. He can't think about it. He goes, I, I don't remember any of it. McCarr chases that puck down. It comes back down to the other end, but everybody knew. When he, and Coach Bednar says, when I saw the guys starting to pour over the boards with four, five, four seconds left, he said, that's when I finally could 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 feel relief. And obviously, you saw the uh, the joy between he and his coaches. And it's it's once those seconds tick down, and I'm sure you're watching, and your your heart is probably hurting, and your, oh, tummy's, your tummy's hurting, absolutely. <laughs> Darcy Kemper said, he's watching the puck over here. And over here, he can feel his guys coming onto the ice. He's going, there's five seconds. What are you guys doing? I got to watch the puck. Too many minutes. Too many minutes. Wait, wait. <laughs> Andrew Cogliano, he was just talking to Nick Rothschild, so let's see what he had to say. You can hold, hold, you can hold her, come on in, bring the family in, man. Look at the camera, look at the camera. Oh, let's ask her a question first. What's your name? Lottie. Lottie. Lottie, and how did you like the parade? 
See, I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> How fun was that for you? I that mean, was awesome. A career's long effort yeah. ends up here. Unreal. Like, that's just, uh, yeah, something special, something to remember for a lifetime, um, a memory that you just will never forget. And incredible. Yeah. Could you have tried to dream up what this looked like, and what would that dream look like? No, no, you couldn't. I think this is a experience you experience for the first time. You enjoy it, and you be a part of it, and you live in the moment. And I thought it was just amazing. I thought that was uh, tons of people. Uh, not done yet. Surprising, and how many people here were here? Yeah, surprising for sure. Um, just a situation where, you know, obviously the city is just absolutely jacked up, and this is our first kind of taste of it, so uh, unreal. And, of course, getting to share it. This is what's about. And this is exactly what you want to be a part of for them and for everyone involved. Do you have a favorite moment from the parade? You know what? I think for us, it's just being in it. I think that's the biggest thing, you know, being a part of it. And, you know, now we uh, we get to end it with uh, City Hall, and it's exactly what we want. Like you said, it's just beginning. You two go enjoy the rest of your day. Thank Thanks, you Andrew. Much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Juno is not surprised. Us, the three of us, we're not one bit surprised. We know this city. We know this hockey culture. We know the fans here. This is exactly what I expect. It's magnificent and it's wild how many people. But yeah, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not surprised. Are you, Moshe? No, nope, not at all. You know, and it's funny because Andrew Cogliano, you don't really know how a piece is going to fit in when it's acquired at the trade deadline. He's been in the league a long time, and Pete and I have done a million of his games with other teams, and all those years with your brother's team with the Ducks, and Edmonton, so on and so forth. Anaheim, Dallas, yep. San and Jose. And so you're like, okay, well, you know, what, what's he going to bring? The, the incredible professionalism, incredible motor, and when he broke his hand, and, and he's got screws, I don't know if people can see it, he's got screws in here, and his fingers, they can't, they only do this. He said, I don't need these. I just need these and it to his legs. He had huge moments for the team along the way. Every guy matters. He was clutch. He was clutch. All right, Russell Haythorn is here in Civic Center Park somewhere in this sea of people. Russ? Go for it, Yeah, and Civic Center Park really starting to fill in now as all those who were lining the parade route are making their way to this location. We're standing here in the shadow of the Colorado State Capitol. What a venue for this. We've got Chase, Angelo, and Ryan. Ryan that's right. Chase, get up here. Hey, uh, talk, to, talk to me about that run, that incredible run through the Stanley Cup playoffs. It's magical. I mean, what more can you ask for out of a group of guys? I mean, yeah, this is what yeah. we dream of. I mean, this city deserves the championship more than anyone else, and we finally got it. Angelo, I love the shirt there. Where'd you get it? I got this from a local vendor, actually, up the street. Awesome. The street. What was your favorite part of the Stanley Cup final um, and that playoff run in general? Honestly, probably that first game went to overtime. I thought we were going to look good there and uh, got an overtime goal to seal it up. Game and one. then that second one, the 7 to nothing shutout. I thought we had a sweep in, our, in, the, in the view. <laughs> what about this team? What's so special about them? And who do you, you know, these players... Who, who did you like this year and why? Makar. Uh, he's younger than me. No explanation necessary. That man's a stud. No. Ryan, how about you? Uh, I mean, I, I just think the boys fought great this, you know, this whole series, the whole playoffs. But, uh, you know, tip my hat to Kale Makar, Nathan McKinnon, you know, actual real class acts of guys, you know. We thought it was going to be a sweep after the 7 to nothing game, but, you know, we fought hard. Um, yeah, all, all you know, props to Tampa Bay. They gave us a good run, but the Cubs coming home to where it belongs tonight. I love it. Hey, what do you think about this celebration? Where were you guys staged along the parade route, or were you, or were you here? And uh, how has it been today? I was like three years old, learning to walk. First words were abs. <laughs> so how was today though? Today was spectacular, man. I woke up, woke up at 7:30 just to you know get down. But it was it was awesome, man. I mean, I could. The city really showed out today. We really, you know, showed our support for the team, and you know, they fought really hard. So it's awesome to be able to like be able to come out here and you know really you know show them you know the pride that the city has in hockey, Hockey Town USA. It's Number the new one. Hockey Town USA for sure. You got the old school jersey there. Yeah. Show us this champion shirt again. There you go. All the guys right there. Let's go. Let's go, Abs. We won the we cup, the 
And uh, we're here with uh, tens of thousands of our newest best friends. We'll toss it back to you guys. We have so many friends out here who, who seem to want to provide beverages up here on our uh, podium. Well, and these are your people. Those are your people. You know that, right? As, uh, as yes, the queen, as the queen bee of all Denver media, uh, that's probably a natural thing for you. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then, you know what? We really want to see are your dance moves, Moj. Yeah, I'm gonna pass on that. Pete and I are the worst dancers on the Oh my gosh! It's on. just oh, oh no! I promise you that. Oh no! You do not. Hey, if you I... talk about taking a crowd down. We could pull <laughs> this thing down to just silence. But this is fun because this is all our ass music that they've been playing up here at the podium as we wait for the champions to get up here on stage. Any sign of the fire trucks, anybody? Oh, I yeah, think they're, they're probably they're already the parked. Oh, yeah, they're yeah, already. They're, they're probably in behind now. The assembling is now going on, Anna. That's what it is. You got to get everybody, you know, you got to get everybody together and get everybody. There There you go. They're all oh, coming yeah, in. So. There is a Darren Helm who swore the, the game winner in game six. An unbelievable moment for him, obviously. A, a Stanley Cup champion with the Red Wings when he was a rookie. And then he waits another 14 years, Pete. And he told me yesterday, I, I, I didn't know that I'd ever get yeah. back. He said, but I signed with the Avs. I signed a one-year deal in the offseason because I knew this team could win. I, this is where I wanted to be. He Bam. liked the city. But more importantly, for a guy like there, he liked how the Avalanche played. He liked their style. And they don't sit back. There's nothing in goodness is green earth that I hate more than a... 1-3-1 defensive lock or boring defense hockey blowing game. hockey. And that is one thing Joe Sackett, he learned from Pierre Lacroix, you entertain the people. You bring right, something right. that they can watch. And th th that's why when McKinnon got here, Landis Gog was already here. Then you get McCarr. You've got, from both ends of the spectrum, you've got the two most exciting players. When they get the puck, you, me, anybody has no idea what's going to happen. Denver 7, you guys have done an unbelievably good job. Uh, and more people have watched this postseason hockey on Denver right. 7 than in a long time. And, and that, there's a reason for that. Part of it is because you guys are awesome, and ABC is, but also because this Avalanche team gives people what they want to see out of hockey. Speed, skill, toughness. Togetherness. Togetherness, all of that comes through when they play the game. Right. And that sounds, is that silly? No, it's real. No, it's you real. could hear it. You could hear it at each and every game. Like I said, whether it was inside Ball Arena or out at Auraria or Tivoli, you could hear those fans, and th it was electric. It was just electric. All right, we are waiting for this celebration to begin. We're going to take another break. Be right back. The players are gathering inside. We're waiting for a couple of more trucks to arrive and some big shiny silver thing. Thanks for hanging out with us. We are getting set to introduce you to the 2022 Stanley Cup champions. I mean, the 2022 Stanley Cup champions. We're just a couple of minutes away. Enjoy the music and we'll get started with our show. Hello, Mr. Bozier. All right, we're all so close. We're all so close. Alan Roach on stage and uh, we are hopefully minutes away. You gotta be a little impressed here. Every time we go to break, Moj just chugged a beer. You know, and he is functioning as only the Moj can. So professional. It, yeah. Isn't he special? And I was just going to say, professionalism takes over in a moment like this. Uh, but the fans are, are, here's the thing about even guys like us. 
We're professionals. We're on television. Well, that's, we that's, try to be. You're a professional, yes, and we, we can go. only hope to be like you. <laughs> yes. But when the fans, and this is what is so important about something like this, honestly, we have fans out here who are so fantastic. When they want to celebrate with you, you want you want to reward that you want to reward them. So here we, here you I go. guess here we were a few go. moments ago. That's the uh, the tasty Coors Light I was talking about. Just this little, I did not, I did not shotgun it. You know, I'm, oh, right, I'm a little, right. that's a little uncouth for, for this situation. Oh, okay. But if you can get it all down at I one time, just, then that's okay. And you have to do what the fans want, right? Absolutely. Right, Moshe? Come on. Give, the give, them, what give them what they want. <laughs> give the fans what they want. And there's no one like that, like Moshe. But in all no honesty. No one gives the fans more than Moshe gives them. We, we, we are all professionals here, but you never We're know when it's going to happen again. And, uh, you know, to... To be able to be a part of this with you, with uh, with all of our friends at Altitude Sports and, and Denver 7, it's it's a great thing with my partner, Peter McNabb, and, and I've known you for a long time, and you're simply the best. It's it's really an honor to be up here to share this with the fans and everybody I else. I feel the it's same way. I mean, it's just, and it's just fun to be with you two, two of the, the smartest hockey people I know. You know. This is the best place to be right here in Civic Center Park with you two. The cup has arrived. The cup has arrived, so we know it's in the vicinity, so that's pretty awesome. And here, just one more look back in the locker room. And uh, that was the best, wasn't it? It was. And I, when I walked in, I had run to change real quick because my my, my suit, I'm like, <laughs> you know, I, I spent 50 bucks on this suit. So I had to change it. <laughs> and, and so when I came back, I don't know what doused me, but I was doused with a bunch of stuff. And that's that's how it started. But it was a wonderful celebration. And there's this is live right now with the Captain Gabe Landeskog. He gave a speech, and, and, and I can't share it because it, it's to the guys in the room. But he gave a speech toward the end of that celebration inside the locker room that every guy in that room was absolutely fixated on. And Pete, you talk about great captains and great messages from captains. Yep. Landis Gog is that guy now, and everybody was fixated on what he had to say, and you could hear a pin drop. This is after all the celebration, after all the, the libations and the fun and the squirting of the champagne and all that sort. This is way later. He commanded everybody's attention, and it was just a wonderful, magical thing to see. I was very fortunate to see that, too. You know what's, what's, what's interesting? Because we've talked about Gabe. Gabe has endeared himself to the community just by... By being so good with the fans when things were lousy, he, you know, he it, he was spectacular. And he, I can remember, Moshe, every single loss that the Avalanche took, and there were some brutal, 8-1, and here at the Pepsi Center at the time or whatever, and he would stand up and he'd represent his team and he would speak to the press and he would say to the, I could, you could see him talking to the guys going, you guys can go, I'll, I'll, I'll handle this. So many guys will dive into showers, yep. hide. He never, ever hit, and he never, he was always there taking ownership of where this team was and what it needed to do. And that's a huge statement about his character. And I, again, it, this is all, because I think all of this matters when you win a Stanley Cup championship. It all matters when, it, it all matters to finally get there. And the teams that get there, they've got these same kind of stories. And when you have that C on your sweater, it means something. Well, it, and it's important to yeah. be that, that one who steps up. Like no other sport, baseball, basketball, football, whatever sport you want to talk about, there is no single letter that means there's the leader of this hockey right. team or football team, baseball team. It's just C. And it's right there, and everybody knows. And I've been lucky enough to play on teams where the captain was unreal. And then I've been on other clubs where the captain didn't have control of the club, and it's not so unreal. But when, when you have a captain like this, you automatically have a leg up because your team is following the guy. That, I mean, you know, when you say, when we talk about the best players, I mean, everybody knows, and he knows, and McKinnon and McCarr, but. but what he brings, no one else can bring. No one else could put that C on and bring to the team what he brings. And that's what's so important. And I know you guys know your hockey history. Who does he compare to when you're talking about captains over the years or sort of great players over the years? I think Taves in Chicago. Yeah, I think that's a very good comparison. 
you know, although, although he's he's older now than, than when Taves first won it. Uh, I, I just think the great ones who get it in. I mean, there, there are guys like players. John Bellabo goes back to Montreal Canadiens. You know, leadership was such an important part of those, of those teams. And it, it's, it's, it's so rare to find it. You think that you could just slap a C on the best player and away you go. Not even close. Not even. It, you know, because it's one of the things that I've always laughed at, and I, I absolutely believe it, is that when a leader walks in, doesn't have no one has to know. But when he talks, you listen. I was the other way. I mean, not to be still. And the guys would just laugh. Like, Maxie, what are you trying? <laughs> You're an idiot. You know? And they, the guy beside me, who was a leader, would say the same thing, and people would listen. There's just a way they handle themselves. Sure. And the respect that they have that is so important. And he clearly has Yes. It. Yes. All right. So we he have a it. fan invasion going on here. A little bee invasion By the way, I love well, this honeybee. So I love that we had a honeybee that landed here, and I love honeybees. So we're going to let this little honeybee go and do its thing. We have pollen thing. all over the table. And Maybe it's looking. There, there it goes. Okay. okay. Thank You're you. okay. We're going to go to Russell Haythorn, who's talking with some of the fans out here. He's a honeybee. Uh, tell me about you. You run a league over there. We do. So we have the Grand Junction River Hawks, which is our youth program over there. So I do a lot of the learn to play and kind of get kids started playing hockey, teach them how to skate, teach them how to handle a puck. It's really awesome to see them grow and develop over time. And then Jackson does kind of the higher level stuff with a little bit older kids. How did you guys become, how did you become so involved in hockey? Um, did you start as like a figure skater or no so I, you got on the ice and started I did. playing hockey? So my dad's from Sweden, so I felt like I kind of had to and so uh, No, it's hence awesome. The jersey. Hence the jersey. Yeah. yeah, so I uh, I got on the ice and absolutely fell in love with it and ever since then I've been skating and playing hockey Your boyfriend says you can rough him up. Oh, just as well yeah. as anyone. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, she's no. Modest, right? Oh, she's very much. She's been a nationals twice for a U19 Aspen Leafs uh, all girls team. Unbelievable hockey player. She was the only woman in our A League there for a while out in Grand Junction. We just started our facility back up in October, and the reception from the community has been truly unbelievable out there. And the Avalanche winning the 2022 Stanley Cup has only been an enzyme into what we're trying to build up there for our hockey program. It really does inspire other. It's it inspires youth, right? Absolutely. The amount of kids that come in for the Mile High Mites program. Program, which is a Colorado Avalanche Learn to Play program has truly been awesome. The past eight months we've been open out there, and then all the youth kids are just, you know, glued to the TV screen watching McKinnon, Kale, and Landis Cog. What about you guys? Were you glued to it? And what were the best moments of the Stanley Cup final in your opinion? Um, I, mine is Darren Helm scoring that goal in overtime off of the wall. That was one of the best shots I've probably ever seen in the NHL. Off the wall, he checks, shoots, scores. It was pretty awesome. I like that guy. He's a good guy. He has three girls. Yeah. Hopefully they're hockey players. What about you? Um, so I was born and raised in Colorado, so just see, seeing them lift the puck, or sorry, the cup was awesome. So seeing Landis Cog hold it over his head was awesome. And I'd love to see it. What was your favorite game of that final? Absolutely the last game. Yeah. To watch it all come together and beat Tampa 2-1, to one, just nothing better than that. I knew they had that game six. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Sammy and Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. What's your last name? Wilson. And Castle. Castle? Yeah. Okay. Like the all right. Castle. So you guys, we were talking about Gabe Landeskog earlier, how he's been all business, right? Watch, watch this. Watch what happens here. You guys have been incredible with us for all these years, and the way you guys showed up today, it's been nothing short of amazing. We just can't even describe it, and you guys have been incredible. So thank you guys for all your love, and let's get back at it next year. Let's enjoy it. Let's get back at it now. Go have fun, Gabe. Hey, you better believe it. Hey, if you're going to give up your mic to somebody, you give it to Gabe Landis. Absolutely. Right? Hey, Motion, he's going to have to do something with that hair. Yeah. You know, he just never sits right. It's not, you know, come on, Gabe. Poor guy. Work on that a bit, you know. Got one flaw, the hair. <laughs> so and he, he looked half pickled a little bit to me, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> He's been on a fire truck for a couple of hours, and there's Eric Johnson. He's got the Stanley Cup in his hand, and they're 
It looks like in they're preparing. To, oh, there's, oh, there's a picture with all the first responders. Oh. I love that. That is fantastic. Has Eric Johnson let go of that cup? What's that? Not really. Not much. But you heard the story that he woke up in bed with it the other day. Did you hear that? <laughs> yes. We Do you know how it got there? Uh, do I want to know? <laughs> well, not really. Gabe Landeskog knocked on his door early in the morning, and I think he was in his birthday suit oh. handing that cup off. That's that's what Eric so said anyway. You might want to hold it real daintily like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. I mean, it's just it's such a wonderful time, and it's so exciting. And they are so excited, which brings us even more joy. You know, I, we're and watching and this crowd. And, 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 and there have been some historic, historic speeches by some of the guys that they get up to speak, to speak, to speak. There's one gentleman, Jonathan Quick, oh, in L.A., and he might, they might have, he was speaking to the crowd this way, and his players were sitting behind him, so they couldn't really hear, and he starts and he goes, I just love these guys. These are my, oh. and, and finally somebody said, did you, is Jonathan saying what I think he's saying? <laughs> So we never know. Be prepared oh, for anything, everybody That's out there. Right. Be prepared. Yeah. That's what makes this fun. <laughs> and enjoy it. Milan Hedy, one of the Avalanche greats, and Vic Lombardi met up with him a little bit ago. Oh, Hedy. You're one of the few people here that's experienced one of these before. How does this one compare to your parade? Well, there are some people ask me about this, and uh, uh, the 2001 I, I remember, but not not as much. <laughs> <laughs> this one I enjoy, I think, more because uh, you know uh, I was in a different different stage a little bit. But uh, I think both are phenomenal. Tons of people, you know, uh, this is well deserved for this team. Like they're, they they play phenomenal hockey. They're the best team. You're you're still an Avalanche fan, obviously. Do you get nervous watching games like the rest of us? Actually, I did. Uh, you know, during the play playoff run and uh, and you know certain games and the, the overtimes, I did get nervous. Actually, probably maybe more than when you play because when you play as a player, you, you can do something about it or you're part of it. Once you're just a fan or in the stands, uh, it's a little bit different. And I got nervous a little bit a few times, but you know. Uh, guys went 16 and 4 in the playoffs, so it, yeah. it, it didn't get stressful too much. <laughs> Explain to us how difficult it is to win a Stanley Cup, to survive those two months of hockey. It's unbelievable. Like everyone says, it's the toughest uh, trophy to win, and it, it, it is. Like you get to grind the 82 uh, games regular season to just to have a chance to fight for it, and then you got to uh, you got to play two months. We're going to win 16 games uh, against top teams, right? Uh, I mean, uh, look at the last few games, the guys, you know, it, playing with, through injuries, both sides, Avs and, and Lightning, and it just, it, it's an unbelievable grind. And once you get it done and you get rewarded by this, it's it's just unbelievable feeling. It just took too long. It took 21 years, but uh, I'm, I'm glad we got it done. You have an aged one bit, by the way. You look yeah, the same age. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I look at Milan Hedrick. Okay. Go back and look at pictures of yeah. young Milan Hedrick. Yeah, same yeah. Guy. Just try to stay in decent shape so I don't, you know, so I can do things. <laughs> well, enjoy. Yeah. Thank yeah, you, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. What a pro. But, yeah, what, yes. what a pro, but he had the great line there. I don't really remember the, that much. <laughs> the last one. The last one. Trust me. This they, well, we're going to have to send a copy of this show to all the players so they can see actually what they did, ha what did happen on the parade because we're starting to blur four or five, you know. Moe's, you know better than I, but you start blur blurring. Yes, yes, Pete, I, I'm sure that I do. Uh, Milan Hayduk, by the way, one of the greatest wingers uh, in Avalanche history. His jersey's obviously retired. Uh, former Rocket Richard winner. And just an all-around great guy, and so he's going to be celebrating with the players following the uh, the presentation here today and the ceremony here today, and that's fantastic. And it's I love to see the old guys. And yes, guys, listen to me. <laughs> the previous guys partake with the younger guys, and he's right. And Joe and when he said I was nervous, Joe Sakic even said it before the playoffs, before the, the, the final being. Listen, as a player, you can help control things. As a as an executive or a fan or an alumni, whatever. You can't get out there and make anything happen, so you just have to sit there and worry and get nervous, and uh, your tummy goes. Uh, it happens. That's the way it happens. Just, <laughs> just human beings. Your tummy. Tommy, yeah. your, your tummy. Tummy. And did your tummy get a little? Oh, of course. But of course. Just to speak a little bit more on Joe Sackett, overtime game-winning goals in the playoffs. Joe Sackett, eight most ever. Next closest, Rocket Richard, five.
The man wow. controlled overtime. That's why he was never nervous when he played. Yeah. Because he knew we were. And now, as you said, you're sitting up there and you're just, you're hoping. When he was on the ice, he was in complete control. So All there. right, we are hopefully moments away from the start of this amazing celebration. We're a little behind schedule. You had okay, asked right? earlier, you guys, do you think uh, you think we're going to go off without a hitch today? <laughs> no, of course not. Something like this, it becomes its own animal, its own entity, its own. It, it, it weaves itself through time. We're a little bit behind, but that's okay. You're going to get the great payoff soon. The players' parade, right? Oh, yeah. And some, somebody said out. to me, if they, you know, if they get over early, uh, do you guys want to fill it? <laughs> it's you know. Did you bring no, your, did no you bring early. your sleeping bag? Uh, I brought you know mine. Pete brought we, his. We, yeah, we might finish by midnight tonight. All right, for all perfect. We know. But this, this is. Oh, so here fine. we go. Oh, here we go. Let's get this party started. Oh my! See there's... Alan Roach there on stage. That is Kale McCarr. I recognize that hair anywhere. It's our own Steve Justin. There is Alan Roach. All right, so this is about ready to go down, Ann. So we are waiting and counting down with all of you. Again, it's a live parade. Good stuff happens. Look at that crowd out there. But look, look at the stuff, the, sh the jerseys. Because I was asking the guy at, at the uh, Altitude Authentics, what's the number one seller? Jerseys. Our fans love jerseys. Other, t other teams, it's different things, but jerseys. And I said, okay, number one guy, Car McKinnon, one and one A. They're, 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 the, they're the two guys. And then Landy, and you know, and then out. To, but those two guys are just—they light it up. But you're right. Look at all. Look at all of them out there. Yeah. And this, this group—they're just—they're just ready to be here and to hear from these players and just to celebrate today. This is a—it's a holiday. Yeah, it is. It's a holiday. Time. I arrived to the to the park about 6:45 in the morning, and there were some fans already lined up at the front. And I've got to believe. Well, I hope they—they've, they've, you know gone to get something to drink and eat and take care of themselves and all that but they have literally been here for five almost five and a half hours waiting for this moment and that's dedication <laughs> and you know what it's going to be worth it it, it is. is their their friends that didn't come will be jealous when they tell the story because this is a water cooler special water cooler special right here you know, at the parade, you know, when Gabe came out there with the cup, he was first, and then, then EJ came out. You know, and then Nathan came out. It was really great. They talking and everything. It is. It, well, it is this is one of those things where you say, were you at the parade? Yep. Yes. And yes. That, that's just camaraderie right there. Yeah. When you know that you and however many hundred thousand people were out at a parade and like this. And these are all Mosier fans, too. That's, that's the key, <laughs> as we've seen, you know. <laughs> Not, not really. They just like to provide me with things that, you know, it's... When you're thirsty, you're thirsty. I suppose that's the case, yeah. He has a natural, long-lasting thirst. It's it's impressive. It, it's a, it, it's it, due it, to it's, a bad gene pool, and I, there's nothing I can do about it. It's hard to quench that sucker, you know? Okay. you got, you got to work hard at that. All right, we're going to take another break, gentlemen, and uh, we're going to get this celebration going here shortly. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Denver 7 and Altitude Sports coverage of the 2022 championship celebration presented by Toyota. Visit Denver and the city of Denver and what a party here in the heart of Denver today. Look at that aerial shot of this crowd out here. You want to give me your address so I can stop by after? You know what? I, I, I know probably what? don't have enough uh, seats on the back porch. You sure? The back patio. I've seen your place. It, it's, it's a mansion. No, no it's Maybe not. we could just put on the bottom. Just scroll it. Is, is, party stop emotion on. after. Yeah, exactly. That's right. We are waiting for the players to get up on that stage. We know that we are minutes away. We know they're here. We we know they made it. It's just a matter of. So let me ask you this, Ann. Yes. What do, you, what do you think they're doing back there? <laughs> they're having a good old time. They're a professional. A good old time. I've been in that building. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I've been in jury duty in that building. It's not a good old time. It's a little bit different this time around, right? You gotta no. you gotta figure they're they're setting the stage. They gotta pee. So they've been on the. the okay, there you go. There, you, you gotta, you gotta be, stuff. and maybe get a little water to sort of balance out life there a little bit, and then uh, Gabe try to fix that hair. 
you know, and just, you know. It's always perfect. doesn't okay. have to fix anything. No. And do you think they have prepared speeches, or is this kind of a wing, <laughs> wing it situation? <laughs> did you say, did you, and <laughs> any prepared speech they had was left <laughs> off. It got run over by a fire truck at Ball Arena at about 9.30 a.m. today. And can, can't you see that? Hi, my name is Gabe Landeskog. <laughs> I am the captain of the Colorado Avalanche. We are so happy to be here. <laughs> I have been no. enjoying myself <laughs> with the fans since about 8.30 this morning. It's awesome. It's certainly, okay. it's certainly but I, I know we're being silly, but it's, yeah. it's it, that's what it's like. It's that it's that kind of atmosphere. It's that kind of fun. And you know that the guys are, are they're just enjoying themselves they're the best they athletes. possibly can. I mean, young and crazy, yeah. Yeah, but as I've said so often, there are times for everything in life. There's times to be serious. There's times to work hard. But there are times to just let it go. I mean, and this is that time for the avalanche. And the, I, I was talking to the National Hockey League, and I said, the one thing that will not happen, absolutely won't happen, is you will not be embarrassed by what the avalanche do with the Stanley Cup. That is not going to be. Because you've got right from the top, you got Joe, you got Coach Bedner, and you got Gabe. They'll have fun, and they'll have moments. They, and they'll let as many people as possible touch that cup, but they're not going to embarrass that thing. Well, we have seen their serious side. Oh, yeah. I mean, throughout the playoff, even the post-game interviews, throughout the playoffs, they were all so serious, all business, all the time. And so it's it's a refreshing, right? And it's, a, it's a relief. It's, it's, it's a let loose type of situation. And, and keep this in mind, we're in July. Okay, I mean, well, essentially, oh, should have been over. I mean, this is the Almost. July tomorrow will be will be July, and but the season will be upon us. The, the NHL is getting back to a normal schedule, so the summer is condensed. These guys will enjoy themselves for this week, and they'll start working and getting. In less than two weeks, yeah. they're going to be right back at work, and, and they'll have their day with the cup and all that. But they're they're going to be back at work doing what it is they do to prepare for the season. That is today's modern NHL player, today's modern Colorado Avalanche athlete. It is a year-round. Yes, it is. That, that, that'll be the window. I mean, amazingly, I mean, I would have given myself maybe a year or two if I wanted to come. <laughs> you might have seen. <laughs> there, were, there would have been reports that McNabb was seen somewhere. <laughs> but these guys, they'll take two, two weeks, and they'll get back. That's to it.